get into a, a level at least so that we can uh, we can have yeah. some some gameplay for these lovely folks to watch so uh oh the spooky trials have moved of course because it's a different day yes and this they're, they're separate from the daily trials which is one of the first things that got me excited i was like okay so it, it's not just a like a reskin of daily trials it's something like completely separate yeah which is very awesome and hopefully we'll have more of this like special trials coming in the future yeah. uh we have some plans for new stuff coming up soon so yeah uh, hopefully we can keep keep it fresh. Yes, uh, we've, got, we've got a couple of trials here. We've got a soggy swamp, uh, night mode, mob speed is increased by 30%, but we have chilling. So that seems pretty balanced. I think we'll go for that. Nice. All right, hop on board. And uh, you've spun up a character for this, so hopefully we should be at roughly the right sort of power level that we can breeze through it. Although night mode is interesting. So tell yeah. me a little bit about night mode and, and what went into that, because this is the first experience I'm having of it. So potentially here I'm going to see some stuff that uh, I haven't well, seen before. Well, that's yeah, just uh, fine. We, worked, we already wanted to release night mode for um, the very oh, re release I'm of already David dead. <laughs> I, I am already dead. Great. This is off to a brilliant start. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Coming. You're, you're coming. gonna be you're gonna be carrying this entire game. I can already tell. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, you got some bees out there. Great stuff. Yeah. All right. Let me let me get back into this because oh, I've I've not done uh, a great deal of multiplayer already, and so like the the emote menu just came up and startled <laughs> me because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I feel okay. like playing with several players is different than being on your own. Yeah, like, I'm I'm sure. It's uh, more mobs and. Hopefully a bit more difficult, so... Woo. Oh, I just immediately tanked that creeper. Again, off to a great start. <laughs> <laughs> so, like like you were saying, um, so you, Night Mode was something you've wanted to implement for a while, but you just... Uh... Yes, but uh, it was a bit more problematic than we expected from the beginning. Uh -huh. So, we just decided that, uh, yeah, the spooky season was the perfect time to to implement it and fix it and, and work on it. So... Yeah, we're, I was working for a couple of weeks on balancing these trials and making sure that the that the mode makes sense and that it had the, all the good rewards. So yeah, hopefully people enjoyed it and didn't struggle too much with it. <laughs> it is wild that the mobs keep spawning because like that's the the point of night mode really is to be like when a player is down in multiplayer and some folks who haven't played multiplayer might not have experienced this but mobs constantly spawn while you're trying to get your allies back up and that yes. seems to just be that's just happening all the time now <laughs> yeah. which is a little bit tough to handle here and there I, I like how it gives a very different challenge like you cannot stop to like wait for your healing potion or whatever yeah, you need I, to be on the move I was just trying to do that and realized, oh wait, no, I have Radiance, so I should just walk up and punch something and that will help. But yes. Yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge getting through all of these with your health intact. So I definitely favor like a lot of uh, close range fighting styles. Like I'm, I'm basically just using fighter's bindings here, even though I have a bow equipped. Um, what kind of stuff do you like to play? Like when you're teaming up with people, do you just tend to fit whatever like gaps the team has, or are you are you more of like an up close and personal kind of fighter? I tend to be like one of those people that likes the most stupid items. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I, I just like the things that look flashier or weirder or do crazy stuff. And some of the time, those are the best weapons, though, yeah. right? Like, sometimes they've genuinely got some great effects attached to them. Yeah, I feel like I only incorporated in the game the weirdest ideas, like the uh, enchanted grass and stuff like that. I just <laughs> like to see how very bizarre stuff fits in players' builds, basically. It's it's funny, I only just got the enchanted grass recently, because I think it, it only came up after I started... Um, trying to run the, the the achievements and the challenges and there was right. one for um, beating the secret level only using jungle weapons and uh, that was the first time I'd seen the enchanted grass I hadn't got it at all before that so that was uh, a super cool addition and I, I, I love the sheep <laughs> like the, sh <laughs> the sheep have always looked like the most derpy mobs with their kind of like outward facing eyes and stuff so it's it's really funny seeing them in uh, in all different colors yeah it's different definitely my favorite mob for sure <laughs> And this is so funny because, like, 
most of the time in dungeons you clear an area before you move on, but here the, the mobs are just going to keep coming. So yeah. like, I keep forgetting to make progress through the level because we're just standing still and fighting anything that comes close to us. Yeah, the, the same happened to me when uh, testing uh, night mode at the beginning. I was like, all right, I need to keep on going because I I love clearing the whole level. Like I love yeah. going to all the dead ends and whatever and like fighting all the mobs and exploring everything. but. In night mode, you cannot play that way, or you'll be you'll be here forever. And when uh, the the end screen comes up and it says you fought a hundred percent of the mobs, <laughs> you just get that moment of satisfaction. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, you can't always get that with night mode because they're always just going to keep respawning. But that's exactly. fun though. It's a, it's another layer of challenge, and it's another reason for players to spend a little bit longer in these worlds, just kind of taking everything in as well. Although, uh, I'm not quite sure how much of the scenery I can look at when I'm too busy <laughs> being surrounded by zombies. Yeah, like, I think the new rewards as well are very cool. Like, I really like them. I think the art team made such a good job with them. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm down. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. No, Creeping Winter was amazing. Like, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought the jungle levels were, like, really kind of... They were sort of disorienting in a way that jungles are in mm -hmm. Minecraft, in that they had so many winding pathways and sort of covered areas. It took me ages to figure out that I was supposed <laughs> to go across the leaves. Right. Yeah. I, I need, I need better healing. I think <laughs> is what I need right now. Whoops! It's the witches. They always get me. Yeah. Yeah. I encountered some witches. I was playing through a couple of Apocalypse Plus levels, and I encountered some witches that just had gravity. It wasn't even gravity pulse. It was just gravity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could not escape their orbits. It was like, <laughs> it was it was very, very tricky to get away from them. And so, yeah, I just ended up, uh, whoa, there's, there goes another creeper. Um, yeah, I just ended up uh, fighting my way through them because it was the only thing I could do. Yeah. What? Yeah, but uh, what you said about the jungle, we had to tone it down quite a bit because I think it was even more labyrinthing, labyrinthing. So uh huh. Yeah. At the at the very beginning, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, like you get the feeling of like exploring this very wild environment. Uh, oh, <laughs> every time. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's always been wrist. it's always been me <laughs> every time. That's the. Uh, the key to it is play with one of the developers. They'll always be able to res you. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, well, there we not go. Not always. But we get to play a lot of multiplayer at work. Sure, yeah. Uh, to test like things like the crossplay coming up soon and, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So. Very excited about that, being able to play with PC uh, versus Switch and Xbox and basically everybody all collaborating from different devices. Because not everyone's going to be able to have like four PCs in their house to play with no, their kids. Of so. Course. And this is definitely a game for families. Like, I've seen so many people saying this is, like, their, their kind of first introduction of their kids to, like, the old-school dungeon crawler style of games that they used to play. Yeah. It's been super fun uh, hearing, like, the community really embrace this game as a title for the whole family to play. Yeah, that's been my favorite part of it, uh, to be honest. Like, I'm, I'm super happy. Like, we have many co-workers and people in the Microsoft side of, of our team that were like, yeah, my children love it. Like, they all want to play all the time, and they ask for all the cheat codes, and I was like, no, we... <laughs> Are there cheat we codes to it? <laughs> I was going to say. All right, I can just about reach you, as Thank long as these you. skeletons don't... Yep, there we go. I'm slowly repaying the favors already. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, people in the chat are saying, like, you can't even see the players half the time because there's just so many mobs around. Yeah. It is it is pretty hectic. Like, this is more mobs than I've had to deal with, and I've played basically every difficulty level this game had up until this point. Not anymore, though, because there's <laughs> 20 more of them that you guys have added. Who do we have to yeah. blame for that, by the way? Is it you? Is it Mons? Is it David? It like, is who do the, I, who do I direct my tweets to? Of everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. we, when we try to come up with... What should we work on next, and what the, would the game benefit from next, and what would the players enjoy? We sit together in the room and we discuss, like, you know, the, the features that we've come up with and ideas and so on. And then, yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of everyone, unfortunately. Yeah. So you, you can tag <laughs> the whole team. And... I, will, I will angrily tweet at everybody when I get <laughs> killed over and over again in this game. No, it's, it's all good. It's been an absolute blast playing this at whatever difficulty level and 
yeah, it's it's super fun and like I, I want to say like how, how much of how much of this game so you're you're a senior game designer so what what exactly does that involve like how many aspects of the game have you touched or is it just more of like a collaborative thing like you were uh, you were saying with implementing stuff like night mode so most of the things are very collaborative uh, mm -hmm. but my job is a lot about balancing mobs and designing new levels and coming up with new features and balancing those and so on. So, uh, yeah, I, I work in like creating systems and balancing them and so on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I make some of the levels as well coming up. Whoops. You're talking about the levels coming up. So uh, is some of the stuff from Howling Peaks, has that been like your stuff specifically? Or are you looking more towards the, uh, the future? Because we know there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of other levels coming at some point in the uh, not too distant future, hopefully. Uh, the levels in Howling Peaks are mainly designed by our friends mm -hmm. at Devil Eleven, so we're oh, great, our yeah. partnering uh, company. But uh, no, currently working on levels for the Nether that I know that ah, yes. people are very excited about. So Definitely. yeah, doing a lot of Nether work. It's it's looking awesome. I'm so excited about the Nether. Is much of it kind of influenced by the redesign of the Nether that's just happened in the latest Minecraft update, or yeah. was it kind of like it was in progress before? Uh, no, so it, it, we work in parallel uh, yeah, to sure. their Nether work. So we try to work a lot with the Minecraft team, and we have meetings uh, like all the time, and and try to agree on what would this mean for dungeons and uh, stuff like that. So we try to translate the, the stuff in the in the original game into what it would mean for a dungeons level and so on. I think we're going to have to make our way out of here because yep. <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> it's getting a little a little tough and uh, we have we have objectives to beat. Uh, someone in the chat was asking how a day at the Mojang office goes, but I suppose right now the <laughs> the more pertinent question is how has it been working from home because you guys released this game from home which must have been an additional challenge on top of releasing a whole new Minecraft title with all of the yeah. expectation that that must bring. Yeah, we, we had to delay it for a month just because of the transition home. Uh, it was very unexpected. But apart from that, I think it's been working fairly well. Uh, <laughs> woo. Yep, there's a lot of heat in this cave. I'm Wow, that, did that witch, witch just throw like five potions? Yes. <laughs> oh no. Oh gosh, that's going to be tough. Be... Yep, looking forward to this. <laughs> Ooh. I've got potion barrier, so I can just stand in the middle of these guys, and hopefully they won't do too much damage. But that's only going to last for another four seconds. Mm. Get that iron hide amulet. Nope, yeah, I'm down again. No. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's that's a lot. That's like we're dealing with this in stages. Oh my goodness. How many enchanted slimes there is? Oh my goodness. It's like, I made this, so I'm, I'm the one to blame. <laughs> You're definitely blaming you. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and slow everything down. Where are you? You're all the way... It, you're all the way over there. Yeah, it feels yeah. like you're... Yep. Nope. We're not making it out of there. No. Nope. Goodness. Oh, that my is, God. That is absolutely wild. That was uh, wrecking. <laughs> Oh, so uh, the enchantments are kind of more randomized though, right? So you don't necessarily know you're going to get that combination of enemies every time. Yes, so that's that's the difficult part. Like, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. So it's important. Yeah. Like, we need to test these things a lot to make sure that, yeah, you know, it's going to work. <laughs> but then these things happen and you get completely wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and anytime I see a mob with, um, is it electrified? The one that just oh, makes yeah. them like zap you every couple of seconds i just stay the heck away from those for as long as i can yeah because that is that is really quite something oh boy well uh i guess we better try again or we could try uh one of the other trials i i assume that was a level one trial so oh, i assume whatever's yeah. coming up next is going to be even worse but we may as well uh look around here so 33 percent of range mobs are replaced with spiders okay spiders are not terrible not but too bad 50% of ranged mobs have the multi-shot enchantment, so more witches is going to be fun. Uh, but we have thorns for this one. We'll give it a try. Let's let's see if this one... The recommended power is 128, <laughs> so I think we might need to, I don't know, maybe get some slightly better gear here and there. Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll see. But hopefully there's not that many witches in pumpkin pastures. Yeah. Then yeah. Uh, there's a lot more in Soggy Swamp. Yes. 
Uh, there's some people in the chat saying hashtag blame Laura, but someone else <laughs> is saying someone else was saying thank Laura for making it a challenge. And yeah, I kind of agree. Like, it's it's funny how with a game like this, there is that certain amount of like um, power creep almost, where yeah, you you get really used to le like playing the game at a at a higher level when you just have like top level equipment and it can really feel like there's nothing beyond that. So the fact that it scales up even more after this point is really kind of an achievement in itself. Yeah, <laughs> it's... I think situations like the one earlier like make it interesting because if I would manage to beat everything all the time, like there's no goal, like there's no way yeah. to push forward. Yeah. Uh, so, and if you get like into those uh, clusters of crazy enemies and then you beat it, like you feel so amazing, so. Yep, these are skeletons with gravity. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I feel like we kind of ran into all of those enemies before you got to really talk about what it's been like uh, releasing the game from home and, and right. working on it from home. So yeah, can, uh, say a little more about that. Yeah, I think like the main difficulty is just being able to talk with everyone. Like being at the office, so many things come so naturally. Like we just talk to each other about all sure. sorts of things and you ask, you turn around and you ask for feedback or like you ask some questions and you discuss some stuff. Uh, now it's been, you know, that's been a bit trickier, but I think we're, we're doing fairly well considering. Um, so people are working very hard in all the things that are coming soon. So yeah, hopefully we'll still at the same speed. Oh, <laughs> probably yeah. best to stay away from that creeper. Enchanted um, creepers are not yeah, not My great, favorite. especially when they have gravity as well. Um, so, I guess how much of how much of your kind of like I guess office social time like do you, do you spend a lot of time catching up or is a lot of it like more kind of meetings and game focused stuff? Like, do you get time to just kind of goof around and play the game now that it's out in like a finished form, or do you tend to spend most of the time just working on new stuff? Uh, so we have a lot of scheduled time to play together. Like mm -hmm. every Thursday we play the game together and we check like what has been implemented this week, what is new, what should yeah. be, like what should be tested by everyone. And we get feedback and so then the whole team can give input and we can figure out like, oh, this is working, this is not working and so on. So that's... That's mainly what we do. And then mm -hmm. we always goof around in meetings anyway. <laughs> so so I, th I think like there's a still a lot of like that cozy talking to each other space, but yeah, it is not the same nonetheless. Yeah. But I think we're, we're trucking along. Yeah, I'd, I'd say you're doing pretty well <laughs> considering that like the whole lifespan of this game has basically been since everyone's had to work from home it's been yeah. <laughs> re really great to see uh see how well the game has been received and everything and i think you guys are doing a fantastic job yeah we we watch so many streams all the time like we saw your your stream of the no weapons run of the <laughs> game and so on like we were so excited and we've been trying to play play bleh pay close attention to what people say and like what is problematic what should we fix mm -hmm. what should we do more of and so on Whoop. one of the things i've always liked about the level design in dungeons is how different the colors can be from vanilla minecraft you've got levels like this where it has much, so much more of like a fall kind of this is actually perfect for it being like the spooky fall update playing this level because like all of the the autumnal colors come out in the trees and that's uh that's super cool looking um how much of the the design of the game is kind of like do you draft anything in minecraft first or is it all done from within the game engine with just like an understanding of what the general aesthetic of Minecraft is. No, the, the all the levels are made in a special edition of Bedrock. Uh huh. So we have a Bedrock made editor that we use to make all the levels, and then we port them into Unreal and tweak them and de like decorate them in there and add the light and so on. But it's uh, yeah, all the geometry is built in. In Minecraft. 
that's a really fascinating workflow because I imagine like a lot of the time with any kind of game like this, you don't have a foundation like Minecraft to work from unless it's specifically a spin-off game. So a lot of people are going to have to build levels like that kind of from the ground up. Yeah. Whereas you've you've got like a special version of Bedrock that you build all of these in. That's really cool to know. I just I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about that. Yeah, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. And like we obviously wanted the game to feel as Minecraft as possible, like as part of the same universe. And like the best way to do it was just to build it in Minecraft to begin with. Mm -hmm. So obviously a lot of the systems and and parts of the game that we needed to code couldn't work in Minecraft. Like, that was crazy. So then we use yeah. Unreal for all the heavy lifting. Uh, yeah, sure. But yeah, all the all the aesthetics and the, the blocks are from within Minecraft itself. And so. that's a, uh, a really fun sort of look at using Minecraft as an artistic kind of canvas in a way it's like you know minecraft as a level design tool <laughs> yeah. is something that i feel like people often do in the vanilla minecraft community already you know you have servers that are dedicated to mini games and that kind of stuff whereas with this yeah it is it is literally sort of oh yeah oh, <laughs> there i go as well oops um but yeah it's it's the whole thing is like designing levels in minecraft is something that players do even in the survival game you're effectively sort of designing your own world if you're a builder yeah, and I'm, so I feel like it's uh, kind well, of the same thing. I become a much right. better Minecraft builder <laughs> since joining the dungeon yeah. soon, for sure. How much of Minecraft had you played before you sort of joined up with with dungeons? Like, had you? It's gonna be embarrassing, but very little. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, like I think um, I joined the team like some months before release so it was very late in development already uh the most of the game was already set in stone like for dungeons mm -hmm. uh and they were looking for somebody to assist them in like the areas where they definitely needed more help uh yeah so that's where i came in and and i had very little minecraft experience which is a bit embarrassing <laughs> So how, but, mu how much Minecraft experience do you have now? Do you feel like you're more of an expert than you uh, expected to be? Yeah, I mean, uh, in any game development job, you have to learn about the games your studio makes. Like, that's just part of the job. So, sure, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and Minecraft is such a charming game. Like, I really, <laughs> really enjoy playing the game as well. Like, we play the game at work as well a lot. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of close talks with the vanilla team. So then I get to discover a lot of the ins and outs of how they make the game and what do they think about and so on. So it's it's been great. It's been so much learning and discovering. I feel like that's one of the first questions anybody asks the uh, the regular sort of the, the, the core vanilla Minecraft devs is, you know, do you guys all play on a server together? Like, what is that like? But yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, we have a... Um, yeah, Mojang only server and we all play together and there's different regions for different teams. Like there's the dungeons area of the server and so on. Uh, yeah. That's very cool. Uh, some folks in the chat were asking, um, and I think I probably know the answer to this already, but it'll be great to get your perspective on it. If there's any kind of plans for a, um, a PvP expansion to dungeons at any point, if like player versus player combat would ever be a thing. Mm. That's something we've been considering, and uh, so far we haven't found the... Oh, <laughs> yep, yeah, I, I didn't see that going well. I saw the Vindicator spawn in, I was like, nope, we're wiping. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we were doing so well. We were, yeah, we did all right that time. No, but uh, yeah, definitely we've been considering what's, what would be the best approach for that, and we still haven't come with the best solution i don't think mm -hmm. uh but maybe at some point we we haven't decided yet let's All right, well, see uh yeah let's let's see what else we can do here we've got we could try pumpkin pastures again we've got another trial at fiery forge which is kind of more soul based i think uh which is not really working for my build mm. um night mode and 50% of melee mobs have committed. So as soon as we start taking damage, they do double damage. I think not. Oh, that sounds uh, terrifying. 
And then Highblock Halls says 33% of melee mobs are replaced with a royal guard and 50% of them have thundering. So I'm not oh, touching no. that with a <laughs> I'm not touching that one with a giant stick. It's it's gonna stay there. Um let's also check out some Apocalypse Plus though, because we've been playing yeah. the spooky trials since we started here, but um I kind of want to see if I can because obviously gauntlets are kind of my main weapon with this character, so I kind of want to see if I can maybe play a little bit of Soggy Cave and get some better gauntlets. We can roll through one of the bonus levels and then maybe check out some of the other trials yeah, after let's that. Do How does that sound? Let's do that. Apocalypse plus four. Okay, so this is four tiers higher than Apocalypse difficulty was to begin with, folks. I'm already scared. <laughs> let's see how we do we can always drop it down again that's the the thing i really liked about the difficulty system in in dungeons to begin with is that if you if you found yourself getting overwhelmed by a level you could always drop it by one difficulty and go back in and you'd usually have a much easier time right and then you could kind of build up the courage to take it on and see <laughs> if you sort of got lucky but i guess like dying and respawning has really just been part of the point and it's such a key part of vanilla minecraft i think as well that it really can't be overlooked as a key factor of dungeons too. You gotta have Whoa. that challenge, you know? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm leaving you hanging over here. I'm just like, <laughs> stay, no. Defend the bridge, Lara, defend the bridge. <laughs> oh, ancient bow, awesome. I will take a look at that in a second. I don't think I've got that one before. Oh, the witches, they're yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> I brought us to a swamp, my mistake. <laughs> Whoop, I rolled out. <laughs> Man, the witches are just like... They, they're they tanks. They take so much damage. Yeah, and they heal up all the time. They're so annoying. I don't know who oh. came up with those, but me. Yeah. It was not me. <laughs> this one, I'm not the one to blame. Yeah, I think I think witches have been around in Minecraft for quite a while, yes. so I feel like yeah, they've they've always had that behavior. It just translates really well to being an enemy in dungeons, I think. It was probably Yep originally, so I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. tell him. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll blame blame Jens for all of this. Yes. No, he he is lovely. I'm sorry, Jens. Yeah, <laughs> no, we we don't really blame. I mean, when no. when we blame him, we do it with love. It's yes. Yeah, he's been such a. Uh, an interesting guy just kind of hearing his whole perspective on everything he was talking at minecraft live about how he has kind of like a an in-house book of all of the core concepts yes. that have to be part yes. of minecraft do, do you do you guys get a copy of that in minecraft dungeons do you guys get to see all of the uh the kind of inner workings of jens's mind yeah well, yeah we all got that uh and as i was saying earlier like we have a, a weekly design meeting with all the design people in the studio and Jens is part of that so get to hear his thoughts a lot and that's always very interesting um yeah i'm trying to come and rescue you but my tnt fell off the side so yeah, it didn't blow anything up <laughs> it'll be okay i will uh hopefully i, be I believe to... in you you can do it you have the, hey there we go okay the wind the horn is saving me kid. as it, yeah <laughs> there we go believe in bare fist steve yes yeah, there we go. Just this one witch. Thankfully, nice. night mode doesn't really apply to these little uh, these little extra challenges. Yes, that's good. Soon, though, we'll see. I got so good at rolling Soggy Swamp just to try and get better fighters bindings that I there was a time when I could solve the the block puzzles really really fast. <laughs> There's the the ones that have like the the five different pistons instead of three. Um, mm. It took me a while to figure out what the patterns were, but after after a certain point, I was just doing it without thinking. I think I'm probably a little bit rusty this time, but <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, we have some new puzzles coming to Howling Peaks, and those yeah. are going to be more random. So I was I was gonna yeah. I was gonna ask you about Howling Peaks because you've got a lot of new mechanics kind of coming into the yeah. the design of the level is kind of integrated with those mechanics, which I always think is the most impressive like aspect of game design is how you integrate level design into the story in the same way there's a lot of games i love that do stuff like that with their mechanics where they always end up having a mechanic that really fits super well with the story they're trying to tell and that always feels like a much more coherent experience yeah like uh, we try to figure out first like the theme of the levels that we're gonna have and then try to figure out what would be fun and interesting and fit the level well. So in Howling Peaks we will have a lot of wind-based mechanics 
and I think that's going to be very fun. Like so far, all the puzzles and and all the little nooks and crannies in the level are very interesting. So that's going to be cool. Um, yeah, and it's tricky as well. Like I get pushed by the wind out of the level a lot. <laughs> that's going to be really interesting as well. The uh... I, th I think bringing in mechanics that obviously we don't have wind really in Minecraft at all, so you've got to kind of come up with something that's going to be unique to Minecraft Dungeons, but I think it's going to be a really fun mechanic to try out for the first time. And and who knows, like a, a lot of people are talking about what could end up crossing over from Minecraft Dungeons into uh, vanilla Minecraft, and we we nearly had that with the Isolager for yeah. the, uh, the mob vote at Minecraft. So sad. Well, so. Yeah, I know. I think a lot of people were very keen on the Glow Squid, and that's great. I'm like, I'm always in favor of new mobs, but I was voting for the Isolager because I'd already seen it in dungeons. I knew what it was capable of. I feel like this was kind of like preparing me for that, so I wouldn't get caught off guard by it. But yeah, and actually, the Glow Squid will soon belong to dungeons as well. So yeah. Oh, interesting. We're yeah. getting we're getting a Glow Squid update for dungeons, so people have to like it at that point, yes. right? Because it's it's going to be everywhere. So regardless of whether you not whether or not you like the Glow Squid now, you're going to like it by the time the. Uh, I assume that's arriving probably in the uh, the ocean update because yes. we saw a little sneak peek of that at Minecraft Live as well. Yeah, that's going to be very different as well because it's going to be like underwater dungeons. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see how we make that work. Hopefully well, and like people don't hate them, like I was gonna underwater say, how much, levels. How, I was going to say, how much can you say about that? Because I know people really don't like underwater levels super much. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like it still has the same feel. You know, you're still walking around on solid platforms. You One of the things I noticed in the trailer that I thought was really cool was you kind of do a, a kind of graceful spin through the water instead of rolling. Yes. You, you, kind of, you kind of almost dash in the same way that you do with a Riptide Trident in vanilla Minecraft, which I thought was a really cool choice. Yeah, like, uh, obviously we know, like, people's preconceptions of water levels and we're gonna try to appease everyone as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that the levels are still interesting and not annoying in any way, and yeah, I think they're gonna be very different. Like, so far, they look very, very special and colorful and you know, like a totally new environment and that's very nice. So I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a very cool set of missions. Hey, look, we actually finished a level that time. Success! <laughs> hey, I feel kind of proud, but then, uh, yeah, I feel like we could have maybe notched the difficulty up a couple more times and see how well we do there. Yes. Unfortunately, I didn't get any new fancy gauntlets. I ended up getting a cutlass that was lower level than anything that I tend to use right now. So mm. maybe another time, but uh, I wonder what else we can check out here. I got a sad, sad fishing rod. Oh, yeah. oh what a shame. Well, <laughs> maybe there's something else we can try. Um, what's your favorite level? How about we play through something that you really enjoy? Right. Let's see. What do we have? Mm, I really like Fiery Forge mm -hmm. because of how shiny it is. So <laughs> we can play that. I... Fi Fiery Forge is the one with the redstone monstrosity boss at the end, right? Yeah. The, uh, yeah, okay, cool. I I sometimes get redstone mine and Fiery Forge mixed up. Mm, right. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's definitely my favorite boss. I awesome. really like it. Yeah. And uh, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who is subscribing and gifting subs in the chat and a couple of bit... Uh, some cheers and stuff as well. Thank you so much for those. I will read all of those once we're done on the call with Lara here, but I uh, just want to make sure that we uh, we make the most of our time together right now, but I will thank everybody once uh, all that is done. Uh, so yeah, let's dip into Redstone Mines. Do you want to Do you want to start us off? Or... Yes, I can do it. Uh, Fiery Forge, what level do you want to go? Six? Uh, yeah, go for it. Let's let's ramp up the difficulty a little bit and see how we do it. Was, it was four last time, right? So... Mm -hmm. This is a couple of levels. I can't believe there's 14 wow, more levels just, after this. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 wild. But I'm sure hopefully we'll get some uh, some weapons that will. Um, how do I? Oh yeah, this this is the part of uh, <laughs> the part of this that I still haven't quite gotten the hang of. It says accept, but mm, says, you need to press the burger button, like the. How you oh, call there we it? go. It's, I I don't know the symbols because I have an Xbox 
360 pad and not an Xbox One pad, and so the symbol comes up with the the Xbox One button, and I just don't have that button anywhere on my <laughs> controller, and so I was really confused. But it's 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 the start button, believe it or not. To start the level, you press the start button. Who knew? Who knew? Right? Surprise. Uh, <laughs> Come on, chicken. <laughs> I like the little chicken mascot just kind of following you around. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite. He's called Nacho. <laughs> it's a good name. I uh, I don't know. I, I always feel strange bringing pets in. Obviously, like there's some pets in the game that, that help you a great deal, but I always feel like the chicken is somehow going to get lost in all of the chaos, <laughs> even though it's impervious to harm. Like it's not actually going to take any damage. It, it's a very it loyal always... chicken. It certainly is, and, and manages to like weave under the legs of all of the mobs that are trying to kill you at all times. But yeah, I uh, I don't know. I always feel kind of bad dragging it around the battlefield. <laughs> is that the wind horn? It's working very well. Yeah, yeah. The wind horn saved me more times than I can possibly count when I was playing Bear Fist because the. Uh, just knocking enemies into pits as a mechanic. Yep, it almost worked for me there until they all got me. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I use the Torment Quiver as well. Like, it's yeah. very useful to push enemies around. Having having high knockback on anything Let's is going see. to be very useful with... Uh, oh, no, uh -oh. there we go. <laughs> you almost had me, but unfortunately. I think it's the Enchanters. I was going for the Enchanter when I was uh, trying to take out some of these guys, but I don't have the advantage of uh, a long-range weapon. <laughs> in my chosen playstyle. <laughs> it's kind of a testament to the bad choices I make in life. There we go, get in the lava. I always feel bad when you knock an enemy into a pit and then they drop something that was really useful to you and I go, well, I'm not getting that. Uh, sometimes it will respawn back, but sometimes it's a bit buggy. So yeah, in theory I, it should come back, but, uh, you know. It's very good at returning weapons and armor and, like, any of the gear that's actually, like, going to help upgrade your character, but I think with the consumables it happens a lot less. Yeah. From what I can tell. Yeah, we we are going to try to fix that and make it better. But yes, so many <laughs> things to fix. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to this game, and you're adding more all of the time with these extra levels. I mean... I presume that, like, I know you can't say too much about this, but most of the future updates for DLC are going to have roughly the same amount of levels that we saw added in Jungle Awakens and Creeping Winter, right? Yes. Oh, and <laughs> I, I will try my best to uh, to fight these guys off so that I can revive you properly, but... Nice. Potion Barrier is doing a lot of work here. Uh, yeah. And they all have thorns. <laughs> we, we will always try to add stuff as well, like... Uh, f free updates and new content and whatever for the players that don't purchase yeah. the DLC. So, yeah, more things like Apocalypse Plus and and the spooky trials will come as well. So yeah, no, it's it's super cool that you're you're committed to doing free updates to the game as well. I think that's that's really great because I think some of the we'll say early criticism I saw of this game was that people felt like there wasn't quite enough to do, right. and a lot of that was going to come in DLC, but. Um, you know, paying for DLC is not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but I think there was there was a decent amount of levels already for a you know a twenty dollar game, um, and what you ended up with is adding in a couple of bonus levels after the full release and what like when the last couple of DLCs have been added, I think bonus levels have come along with it that are free for everyone to play. Yeah, so so that was the plan all along. We knew that the content was a bit smaller than what we wanted on release, but we we knew that through the updates this year and next year and so on, we will keep adding new stuff and new content. So hopefully, like, the game just keeps getting, getting better as we go. And I can only imagine idea. what it's going to be like. Uh, like, three or four DLC packs down the line, there's going to be about 60 levels or something in this game <laughs> yeah. by that point. There's already something like... it's It's a larger number than you think. Yes. Like, it, it's, it's something along the lines of, like, 24, 25 at this stage, and that's just with two DLC. There's four more coming, basically. Yeah, and, and we added ways for people to see more clearly that they have secret levels to discover and stuff like that. Yeah. So hopefully, like, that's a bit more obvious now as well. I think the thing that really startled me was when I, I made a new character after the most recent update changed the, uh, the camp. And, and split out all of the uh, the villagers into different professions. 
and suddenly on the map there were all of these icons appearing letting me know I could rescue villagers from certain places, which never showed up the first time around because my whole camp was already full because I'd beaten the game. And so it was uh, really quite fun to see the ways in which those those changes end up being made and how that kind of, you know, it, it adds to the map. It kind of adds a little bit more stuff to find. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's not going to be obviously just like maps to play, like we hopefully add more stuff like the new merchants and so on, like things that let you interact with the game different and discover new things. So yeah, we were very happy about the new merchants. The gift wrapper is my favorite, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to use the gift wrapper very much because I mostly end up playing single player, but I do like the fact that you have a mystery merchant in there now who's gonna sell you sort of random stuff the way the blacksmith used to, but then you have a village merchant who guarantees to give you certain things. So, uh, yeah, those those end up being uh, way useful. You can grab the arrows if you want, because I'm not going <laughs> to use them. Yeah, then I thought about it. I was like, oh, he, he never uses arrows. Yeah. Th thank you so much for putting up with my <laughs> weird backwards play style in this game, but hopefully it's uh, a little bit of fun. I think it's interesting. Like, it's very good to see different play styles and what works for different people. I think the next thing for me is probably going to be to find people who are silly enough to try and do a multiplayer bare fist Steve nice. with me and, and end up playing like like the four Steves or something like that. <laughs> sort of sounds like a, a boy band, but I feel like it'd be really funny to try and do everybody unarmed the whole time and try and fight our way through multiplayer because the mobs scale with multiplayer, right? Yes. So you end up with so many more mobs to fight. <laughs> yes, they do. So... I'm sorry, I keep leaving you in such tight spots for this. It's just the enchanted and... Oh, no. Yeah, the enchanter over there has far too many enchantments on himself yes. already. It's not really fair on us, is too it? Too buff. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, my dude, you are too hench to live. You're going in the pit. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, Geomancer trapped me. Yep. 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 Wow, that's, okay. That's a classic. <laughs> that's... Oh, they've given you a maze to get out of. Oh, shit. That's so harsh. Oh no. Oh my days. We're gonna we're gonna make it uh, no. Oh the explosives, it's not <laughs> ah. Oh, you're doing such a good job as well, getting out of the <laughs> getting out of the radius. So many geomancers. All, all of those pillars. Oh my days. Well this is Apocalypse Six, so we knew what we were getting into really, yes. didn't we? I'm just gonna throw that guy into the pit. Yes. Just Oh no, he he jumped. <laughs> he went to the other side. <laughs> Let's see, you're going down. <laughs> no. Oh, why? It's the Geomancers. Why? Oh my goodness. Okay, I need some better armor, I think is what I've just decided at this point. I need something that's going to give me like 70,000 health or something. It's the only way oh, I can... No. The only way I can really deal with this. Oh boy. They oh, are... Oh boy. They are tricksy. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to play more defensively, I think, at certain points. It's, it's well, taking me back to the... The hardcore days. What are you using now? Uh, right now I have um, battle robe. I have cooldown, potion barrier, and it's only one eleven. So I feel like there's going to be better stuff out there. Yeah. But I just like I like the fact that it gives you better artifact cooldown. It also gives you more melee damage. So I just need something that's going to keep me maneuverable and able to reuse some of that stuff. Mm, right. I guess upgrading to something that has damage reduction might help. Got some plate armor. Yeah. I just really. I really like having Potion Barrier. It's one of the things that really got me through those last fights on yeah. uh, the, the main campaign. So having some of that stuff would be kind of useful. Some protection might be good yeah. as well. Talk to the merchants and see what they have. Yeah, this guy's got a scale mail. He's also selling a better death cap mushroom than I currently have, but that's not really going to help too much. Mm. It goes up by 0.1% every time. Uh, mystery merchant, what do you have? Tell me you have some armor that I can snag off of you. Well, that's 116. That's not much better. Let's see. What do I have? I have weirdly high standards when it comes to armor stuff right now, apparently. <laughs> Let's see. That might be useful. 30% chance to negate hits and 35% damage reduction. Sounds like something I need right now. Yeah, 9,700 health. That's <laughs> that, that could be pretty useful. 
little bit of extra burning protection. We can give that a try. How hard do you have to work to make sure that um, enchantments don't tend to overlap with, like, native armor abilities? Because I know you have some uniques that have enchantments basically attached to them already, right? That's kind of the point of the uniques, is that mm -hmm. they get a free enchantment, more or less. Um, is it... Do you do you ever get those overlapping, or has it been made so that they don't end up doing the same thing? Yeah, so, so they are completely random, which means that it can happen. Uh, we have so many enchantments now that it rarely happens, but uh, we just see it as an interesting thing. Like, if you're going for a build with a lot of, like, I don't know, protection or damage reduction or whatever, like, if, mm -hmm. if you get another enchantment with that, like, it makes it maybe better for some builds. Like, what you were looking for, maybe you, you're really looking for a specific enchantment. Or people end up with three cooldown enchantment slots, and that's, yeah. I think that's very funny. Personally. Have you um have you checked out any of the speed runs of this game? Like how much does the speed running community end up uh kind of coming into your radar? Because I've I've seen people speed run this game and they basically do best if they have like three boots of swiftness drops because mm. then they can just constantly make themselves faster. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. So exactly, like th th things like that would be impossible if we like had put some gating depending on what type of armor you have and so on. So. I think like those things are very fun and people use them very differently and yeah, I like that. I think we'll try Apocalypse 5 this time. All I'm right. not going to go back to 4, but I feel like 5 might be the sweet spot of like challenge versus us actually being able to beat the level. But yeah, I think challenge runs like that are always kind of fascinating to me. Like the speedrunning community has obviously had a huge boost in vanilla Minecraft recently. Yeah. And it's not it's not the kind of stuff that I like to do because I get too absorbed in the details of the game and I tend to really enjoy like finding everything there is to find out about a world instead of <laughs> you know, spending twenty minutes with it and then fighting the dragon and saying goodbye. So I think uh it's not necessarily something that I would get involved with, but it, it's always fascinating to me the challenges people impose on themselves. Yeah, like as uh, somebody who's done that myself for a while. Yeah, and and we like to be able to TNT uh, yep. <laughs> to have a, a game that enables that as well. Like I think it's it. I find it super interesting that people take Minecraft, which is a game about exploration and building and whatever, and make it into something so different. It's it's so interesting. Uh, I'm gonna die because there's. Oh yep, well, yep, I yep. I died I died even before the geomancers got me. <laughs> I feel like that says something about way I'm the way I'm playing today. There we go. Thank you. Now, but the geomancers are very annoying sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and enchanted right now. Um. Okay, this guy has just trapped me in a, <laughs> a maze of death. Uh. Yikes. Yep, they are. Definitely trying it. I've managed to find a corner where I'm safe. Uh, not quite, but close. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Work them out. Ooh! Oh. I'm, I'm hanging back over here because yes. of uh, needing a healing potion right now. I'm very, very low on health. Oh, yeah, they got me. They got me yep, threading yep, yep. the needle through the Geomancer. There it is. Okay, well, this is not immediately awful it's bad it's but it's not <laughs> it's doable it feels doable i feel like we just have to persist at yes. a certain point and i can still attack them with shockwave through the uh through the barriers so i'm gonna try and try and separate some of these guys out from the geomancers where i can let's see oh oh so many pillager shots yeah that was <laughs> ridiculous yep they're all they're all aiming at me now uh i might be able you to get you up it. before i you die yes Okay, I'm gonna run away a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry to leave you to that, but we're gonna take gotta... the high ground. Yes, absolutely. On this on this map of all maps, <laughs> definitely take the high ground. <laughs> okay, let's take out some of the enchanters just to kind of clear out all of the mess inside of here. There we go. Yes. I need to get used to using that electrified enchant Ooh. and like ro rolling damage into them, basically.
Oh, the enchanter okay. hit, hit me with his book. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that they can do that. I I remember. Oh, oh no, okay, no, nope, that's not happening. That's not happening. I remember seeing them do that for the first time and realizing it could actually do damage, and I was very <laughs> shocked. But yes. It's, it's a very fun way for them to fight back, I feel like, when, you know, it kind of feels like you're uh, attacking the book nerds after a certain point, but the book nerds have a way to fight back this time. Yeah, the, I didn't realize they did that either until one of the coders told me, like, oh, yeah, we coded, so it hits you with the book, and I was like, <laughs> what? It's very, very good. Oh, oh. Uh, we, got, we know all the secrets. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, you've already done this. Yeah, I, I did. I did the uh, the cow level. May as well show people this for uh, for people who are unfamiliar with how you find the runes in this game. It's always just really fun hitting the button, and if you're doing it for the first time, watching those towers rise yes. up from the fog, and everything feels so mysterious about that. That's yeah. that's one of the things I would love to see more of in future. Is more of this kind of level of mystery and some of the secrets. Because I think, you know, there's there's definitely some really cool stuff to find. You find the scrolls that unlock all of the extra levels. And there's just something about discovering the runes for the first time that feels like like learning some of the deeper stuff in Minecraft for the first time. Mm. Just knowing that that stuff might be out there, but not really knowing what it is. is very cool. Yeah, we really enjoy adding stuff like that. So we're going to try to keep on doing it. We'll see how much we can do. But uh, yeah, we... <laughs> It was crazy how fast people found uh, things like that, though. It's like, yeah, yeah. There's nothing to keep secret from the internet. Oh no, absolutely. And if you if you can say one thing about the Minecraft community is that, like, you know, put them in a room with puzzles that developers have spent hours toiling over and trying to make as difficult as possible, and by like community power, they will have solved it yeah. <laughs> in about five minutes. They're. Uh, an astonishing group of people. I just look at the amount of um, the amount of progress people make with things like redstone. Whenever new redstone, yeah. you know, designs and new kind of mob farms and stuff like that become popular, it's within days of a feature being announced. Often before it's even in the full release. Yeah. Um, people I, get hold of snapshots. Agnes has talked about this before. She's the the lead designer for uh, yeah. Minecraft, and she talks about that a lot like we design things that we think they might enjoy we have no idea how they're gonna use them like because we don't know half the things they know about redstone but you know or like yeah about the technicalities of the game but yeah we add things and then see how they use them it's very interesting so uh, yeah sometimes i feel the same way it's like we add difficulties and somebody will be able to beat it <laughs> Yeah, somebody somebody's gonna be uh, brave enough to take on Apocalypse Twenty and survive. Yes. Level up. <laughs> People in the chat are saying secrets on the internet, <laughs> which is <laughs> what yeah, are you very, talking about? <laughs> exactly, yeah. I I remember looking up so many like game walkthroughs and stuff like that when I was playing some games when I was younger, just to figure out what the secret codes were, so I didn't have to find them in the yeah. game and that kind of stuff. And you know, the the community is like that. There's always going to be you know people sharing information, and it's what made some of the early video games, even like on the Super Nintendo, great. Was uh, I remember hearing a couple of people talking about the original Zelda game and how you just used to compare notes with your friends because nobody told you where the secrets were back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just kind of had to find whatever secret room either yourself or your friend shows you how to do it, and then that just becomes something that's just an integral part of the game. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I really like that feeling of discovering weird stuff. Like you know you're missing something, and like oh this is this is for sure a special thing. Yeah, it must have been that way with the runes for uh, for folks because I remember hearing people talk Gosh. about them before I'd even. <laughs> it's okay, I'll get you in a second. I went down. Uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of like that with the the runes. People were sharing the locations of them. And I was seeing stuff like that. I didn't get you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> uh, they, they were sharing the location sort of before I'd even gotten to that point of, you know, reaching the stage where you could unlock, you know, the church and, and everything and actually find a place for them to go. And they don't start... The locations for them don't start appearing until you've beaten the game once. And yeah. It, it's so funny how quick people are to, 
you know, reveal all of the secrets, but it just deepens people's experience of the game if they can get that far, which is really, really rewarding of it. And what I think is cool about it is that then other people get to find it. Like, there's yeah. people that would never see it if there wasn't for the crazy people that uncovers all the secrets so fast. So I think that's very nice. Yeah. I, I particularly like it. Like, collectible achievement guides are something similar, right? If you've got, like, a ton of things that you need to collect and you're just missing one or two, but you have no idea where they would be in a level, then yeah, yeah, you exactly. can, uh, can rely on people in the community for that. What else are you playing right now, apart from uh, Dungeons? Uh, apart from Dungeons and regular Minecraft, I'm really enjoying Hades, which in a way has quite a few similarities to Minecraft Dungeons in that the levels are sort of procedural. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's more just individual rooms um, than like a Ooh. sprawling level like this. Um, but Hades is a game that has a lot of like late game progression built into it. And yeah, there's, there's a, a lot that I think I'm learning just about the way they put those levels together. And it has a very different character to something like Minecraft Dungeons because it's, I guess, like, it's not it's not something that has a huge amount of existing property behind it. It's all based on Greek mythology. Right. So, uh, yeah, you don't end up with, like, prior knowledge of what they're doing with the world coming into it. Whereas, like, I come into Minecraft Dungeons, I know how a zombie is going to behave. You know, I know how a, uh, a witch is going to start throwing splash potions at you. And so I think it's uh, it's kind of fun playing a few games that are just sort of out of nowhere for me at this point. Yeah, I, I have been meaning to play Hades, but I haven't gotten around it yet. But yeah. uh, I'm very excited because I really like those type of games a lot. Like, I particularly like hard games. I'm one of those stubborn people. Yeah. Ooh, that explosion. <laughs> Luckily, it leaves nothing behind that I can, yes. can get attacked by while I'm... Uh, Trying to wake you up. There we go. Like one of my favorite games ever is called The Binding of Isaac, which is a, a yeah. tough rogue. Like, um, and I like those type of games. Oh no, my arrows went down the drain. Ooh, this is my favorite part. Ooh. Yep, those are those chilling, are very chilling enchanted. skeletons. Ah, uh, okay, this is not going well. Yikes. Okay. I'm just rolling away from everything yeah, I possibly yeah, can yeah, at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, I've never I've never gotten around to playing all that many roguelikes. And and Binding of Isaac is one I know of, but have never have never played. But I hear very good things about that. I hear good things about um Dead Cells, I think is yes. the other one that people compare to Hades a lot. Um or compared Hades to. And um Yeah, there's a there's a few other like more recent dungeon crawlers that have just done really well and so it feels like dungeons sort of came along at the right time um it kind of felt like it was uh almost like it was in the zeitgeist at this point people needed sort of games like this to re-enter their lives since obviously diablo is probably a fairly big influence on games like this yeah absolutely and uh i like that it's a no <laughs> ah, i was trying my best yeah no they're, they're really fast <laughs> it's not easy to fight them and they have protection and they have regeneration. So <laughs> I'm basically forms. doing no damage. <laughs> yeah, luckily my... Uh, when I can get close enough to them, my radiance is kind of dealing with the thorns effect. But that Ooh. is still a very tough vindicator to fight more than one of. That was a tough fight. It's taking two of us on yes. either side to find that guy. That's that's crazy. But yeah, I'm actually going to be uh, playing a little bit of Hades later on in this stream for anybody who feels like sticking around. It felt like a good uh, kind of balance for this game and a bit more of like the Halloween kind of action. It's got a fairly spooky vibe. Yeah. You're fighting skeletons for a lot of it. <laughs> I love the art of that game. Like, I haven't played yeah. it yet, but it looks so beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Supergiant's other games. I played oh, yeah. um, Transistor, I think, is the only game I have 100% of the achievements for on Steam uh, because I just love that game so much. It's and so good. I feel like they've taken a lot of the same sort of design concepts, the kind of, like, the scaling abilities and just the, the combinations of stuff and applied some of that thinking to Hades, and it's paid off really well. I remember enjoying uh, Bastion a lot 
I mm, like that yeah. game so much. Mm. Yeah, Bastion is a, a wonderful game. And so colorful as well. I think that's the, the thing they do really well. And another thing that is really great about dungeons is like the color palette is so broad. They manage to fit so many different area themes into yeah. what could otherwise be a fairly one note game. Oh wow, there's yep. <laughs> trap skeleton horses. Okay. I need to work on the skeleton horsemen though. It's a bit boring. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're they're enough of a challenge if there's so much else going on around you, but I feel like they tend to get stuck in corners a lot. Yeah. In my experience. We need to improve them. And by improve you mean make them harder, right? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Absolutely. <an improvement>. Absolutely. <laughs> I like I like that philosophy though. It's like we need to improve this. Like this needs to be more of a challenge. And yeah, I think that's that's the key really with this is finding the right challenge for it. Yeah, I think I think they're nice when if they're standalone, they're interesting enough. Like our other event mobs, like yeah, like the redstone um, golem or the enderman or evokers. Evokers uh, are a boss yeah. fight in themselves when yeah. they just show up in the middle of a level. <laughs> yeah. I love and hate the evoker all at once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think I'm the same with with every form of the evoker that I've seen with uh, vanilla Minecraft with Minecraft dungeons. They're they're just always a pain. Anything that summons more enemies for you to fight is always going to be a little tricky. I'm not doing well. I must yep, say, and a cave a cave spider was nibbling on my corpse there for a second, oh, but no. you know, take your time. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, Apocalypse Five, folks. It's it's tough out it here. It is tough. Especially when you have Vindicators that have protection and also heal allies. Yeah. <laughs> Just the... And, and again, these, these enchantments, you said they're generated Ooh. randomly, but... Oh, yeah, okay. I will try and get back over to you. Where are you? Over yeah. here. The thing is that more difficulty, we generate uh, them with more enchantments together, so they become, like, sturdier as we go. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then you get guys like this baby zombie who's just walking up to me, hitting me from behind, and then running yes. away again. It's like oh, you have to deal with here. Yeah, I'm going to try and give them the runaround for a second. And oh, yeah. Well done. I'm not going to make it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make it. Okay. <laughs> yep, really, really need help. I think I pressed that accidentally. Like sometimes I'm, I get <laughs> overexcited and I press all the buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that on the uh, the Xbox version of Minecraft. I started playing that about six months before I ever played Minecraft on PC. And uh, when you get jump scared by something, say a creeper <laughs> sort of suddenly appeared, you'd hit the thumbstick and it would put you in third person, yeah. which immediately made everything way more disorienting and it just made it worse. Creepers. Like, I still find Minecraft terrifying. Like, yeah. when I go in <laughs> caves and, like, everything's so spooky. One of my other uh, series on my YouTube channel right now is a collaboration with NVIDIA looking at Minecraft RTX. Oh, nice. And uh, that's got such a different approach to lighting the game. Obviously, it's kind of the uh, the sort of hallmark of the, the RTX technology is more realistic lighting. And... It's so different going caving or going into a forest at night. Oh, it just no. feels like it feels like playing the early game again for the first time because you have to take such a different approach to lighting up the area because the light has to have something to reflect off. Otherwise, it really feels like you're holding a torch in a forest and that's the only source of light for miles and you just can't see anything around you. Uh, it, that sounds so scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes the whole experience very scary, but so immersive at the same time. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how long it takes before we get something like Minecraft RTX and VR and oh, probably yeah. have like the most of experience, Four. the most immersive in Minecraft experience yet. Yeah, I think that's going to be great, but I am scared of Minecraft VR. Like yeah. that sounds, I don't want to meet a creeper like face to face. No, yeah, meeting creepers especially and having, having stuff sort of explode right next to you is always going to be... Uh, a bit of a uh, a crazy one, and and in VR as well, like not really knowing your surroundings. <laughs> That's the the most difficult part for me is is not like getting vertigo when I look down a ravine or something oh, yeah. like that. You know, not not ending ending up feeling like I'm falling in real life when I see myself fall off a cliff in the game, which oh, I yeah. do a lot. So <laughs> it kind of uh, adds a whole new dimension of that. 
think we have another core back over this right. way that I missed. Yeah, it's over here in the corner. Just one skeleton to get past, though. There's some food here if you need some. Yeah, I should be okay for the moment. I think uh, Radiance is really helping with a lot of this. Okay, that's all the cores. Great. Imagine turning around and seeing a creeper in your face. You'd literally jump back in real life. Uh, AEX Sinner just said that in the chat. And yeah. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much agree. Like, I would I would fall over my chairs or something. <laughs> like, I mean, I, even... I get already scared, like, as it is now. I, yeah. I don't think I needed to see it face to face. Yeah. Just having a creeper drop on you in a ravine or something like that, you know, somewhere that you're not expecting it to happen is, uh, yeah, instantly a problem. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm down. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Standing in the middle of all of these uh, pillagers with crossbows. And the evokers. That's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nope. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Apocalypse 5 has beaten us. <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to get a victory here. We were so close. Yeah, we did all right. We did all right. I think Apocalypse Four is probably it until I get some some slightly more optimized gear. I need I need I need more damage. I think is the main thing right now. Right. I think I'm 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 still doing you know, twelve hundred damage per hit, <laughs> but it still doesn't quite feel like enough somehow. Yeah. Ooh, no, ab ab about about two thousand, but e even that good. is. Yeah, <laughs> even that is not enough with some of those mobs. The the regenerating ones are the worst. Yeah. Yeah, the ones with plenty of crazy enchantments are the mm -hmm. tricky ones. Definitely. Let's see if the luxury merchant has anything. Oh, he still has the same stuff because we haven't completed a level. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's why. That's the problem. We've got to re-roll him with some more emeralds or something, maybe. But Let's see. Yes. Uh, we have been live for about an hour now, so do let me know if I'm taking up too much of your time. I don't want to keep you from the rest of your day. And I'll probably be playing a little bit more after... Uh, after you leave us, and then we'll switch over to Hades a little later on. Yeah, just just let me know. I can do another try, maybe. I'm like yeah. I'm like salty now. I wanna I wanna finish one. <laughs> you wanna finish one? All right. Yes. Let's go. Let's go for one more level. Um, I think we'll try. We can try something a little bit further down the line. How about um, should we run through Desert Temple? Maybe. Yeah. Sounds do good. Do that on. Um, you know what? Apocalypse 3. We need a win. <laughs> I feel like making it a little bit easier for us. And uh, I mean, even some of the, the summoners, the, like the necromancers that are in there, those are going to be tough to, to handle. So we'll see how we do. I like Desert Temple. Yeah, it's such a beautiful level. And yeah. what, one of the things I love about the level design is that you haven't found yourselves restricted to just using Minecraft blocks. Mm. And this this level is a great example of that. Like, there's so much stuff that seems familiar, but then you've got things like sand working its way into the stone brick. You've got layers of sand which aren't available in vanilla Minecraft, and there are pots everywhere. And I feel like that's the level of detail that some Minecraft builders have been dreaming about for quite a while. Right. But yeah. I think uh, it just kind of lends a really great atmosphere to the level and allows it to feel different enough from the levels around it, right? We were talking about diversity in level design and in color palette and i think this uh, makes for a really great example of that yeah that's that's another thing that it's a bizarre part of the job it's like doing some pixel art for new blocks and so on and trying to mm -hmm. see what, what works best and that's been so fun to learn and to try to get better at and stuff like that <laughs> it's uh, it's something i was not expecting to to do and i'm very happy with it yeah, this feels a lot more manageable on this difficulty. I'm happy on Apocalypse 3 for now. I like being able to uh, take out skeletons from a distance. <laughs> Very nice, though. Like, the, the, the stacks of gold and stuff as well. It's just, like, it's so cool. I love All the this, uh... music in this one. Yeah, yeah. And, and hearing... I, I know they've done, like, a little featurette on this for the YouTube channel, right? About hearing the, uh, the way the music was made with the choir singing in oh, villager yeah. voices. <laughs> That's... That's just such a great touch. Like it's it's one of those things that you you probably wouldn't think about if you weren't already kind of immersed in the design of Minecraft and the sound of Minecraft to begin with. But I imagine like 
It must have been a really fun day for them when they figured out that's the, the direction the music was going to take. Yeah, I thought that, like, that was so fun. And like the guys in the sound team are so creative. And oh, they yeah. always do crazy stuff. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was very, very funny, actually. And I think the choir had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Once, once they got used to the brief, I imagine it was probably a little easier to kind of... So we're doing what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Listening to a lot of Minecraft. Yeah, how, how deep can you say, oh. huh? Necromancers. Yep, there we go. And I, I just rolled into the pit. <laughs> I'll be over there in a second. I walk yes. slower with this armor on, but it's helping, I think. All right, it I'm gonna is sneak, heavy. I'm going to sneak up to these guys. Attack from within. Oh, no, I opened the emote wheel. <laughs> Dang it. No, I, I did that I did the well. thing. I panicked. I panicked and hit the uh, the wrong button. All the buttons. <laughs> I do that as well. Okay, slightly uh, easier to uh, get me yeah. back on my feet at this difficulty. Yes. There I was like, go. hopefully the all the arrow shots are okay to handle. Yeah, for now at least. Unenchanted skeletons are fine. The enchanted ones, not so much. <laughs> Man, mm. I love the Hero Edition cape. It's so yeah. pretty. <laughs> it's super great. Are there plans to add any more cosmetic things in with the upcoming DLC? Is there going to be another cape for the... Uh, I assume the next DLC is going to come in a package kind of like the Hero Edition did? Yeah. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but there's definitely new things coming up. But I, mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure of what sort of things. But yeah. Sure. The, the... Watch, watch this space. <laughs> yes. The art team is usually... like They are so skilled and they come up with the funniest things and the the better looking things so yeah I, i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. hold still for a second here because people in the chat are asking me to turn up the music since we've been talking about the music i have it oh, turned right. down a little bit so i can raise the volume of that for you guys i normally play with it a little bit lower so that my commentary doesn't get too uh kind of drowned out by stuff but right. i think we're we're loud enough and there's yeah there's some really really beautiful uh instrumentation i think in this one Part of my um, my field of study when I went to university, I did music production. So oh, nice. I'm I'm not really as involved with that world now. Obviously, it's helped with YouTube and streaming, knowing what a good audio setup looks like. But I um oh <laughs> he stopped in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was distracted. I, I always kind of have a fascination with the way sound design and and composition plays a part in games like this because it's. It's obviously such a big aspect of the experience and really helps set the tone for a lot of these levels. Yeah, like I think it makes such a difference, particularly here, that the levels are meant to be so crafted and unique and different from each other. Like, I really like it. I'll let you handle the key. I think you've got a, a slightly stronger weapon and I can run ahead and see if I can take out these guys' shields. Yeah, the, the skeletons with shields are sturdy. There we go. He didn't realize I had snowballs on my armor. <laughs> Snowball is a great item, I think. Mm -hmm. Great enchantment. Yeah, it's very, very useful. Oh, one of the bees. <laughs> one of the bees just got caught in the crusher. Oh, no. I, it makes me so sad when, like, the dog gets caught in one of those scuddy yeah, sort of traps. Yeah. It's like, no. <laughs> and any, like animal sounds in this game are always so sympathetic too like the little yelp the dog does Aww. like pr pretty pretty early in minecraft dungeons i realized i wasn't going to be able to handle having too many pets around because i just don't like when they end up uh, getting killed by mobs or there was a, at one at one point i think i i just unequipped the tasty bone while the dog was still summoned in and it just went and fell over and i just went no my heart can't handle this yeah i, I told peter uh, he's one of our sound, de sound designers and i told him like man the the sound the dog makes when it dies is just evil and he laughed at me <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> and he was like, yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you've got to be a certain level of evil to do some of that sound design stuff though like it's it's a dark art <laughs> i think some of it yeah, but at really the same be, time, uh, it, it makes the, the dog so, like, you feel so much for it, and I like that. Yeah, yeah. It feels feel so like alive. T tugging at the heartstrings is also kind of part of the, the mission statement for the game. Like, if it's made you feel something, then you've done a good job, probably, right? Right. Yeah, I think it makes a difference, for sure. Yeah, I seem to have invited myself down into a corridor where there is no beacon, but there are lots of enchanted skeletons, so I'll be here for a second or two. <laughs> 
Luckily, these aren't nearly as tough as the Enchanted Skeletons in Apocalypse 6. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Those were... Those were a bit much. Let's see. Yeah, three levels lower I can just about handle with endgame gear from Apocalypse in the previous update. Yeah, but I think, like, it's just a matter of, like, playing a bit more, finding some better gear, and then checking it out and see. Damn, these necromancers. <laughs> yeah, they were, the, they were the biggest problem with the, uh, the weaponless playthrough, was just having... Uh, constant enemies spawning when you can only really yeah. hit one thing at once is it's a real challenge is that all the beacons do we have all of them is that oh yeah. you've got one more great which means loot i guess that means the uh the map right yeah yeah i got the lower map. temple isn't there also one over here i think there was like a <laughs> there's a there's a hidden chest over here and i've just kind of fallen through the world trying to get oh, to it oh no uh, it's okay, I'll teleport to you if I can remember how to do that. Oh, yeah, there that's, we go. A, that's a bug I need to fix. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, we found one, folks. We did it. There we go. Yeah, I'm fairly certain there was a way I've seen people roll over to that section, and I've done it again. I've just fallen through the world again. <laughs> hmm. One of my early strategies with... Um, uh, Obsidian Pinnacle, because the the enemies there were so tough when I was still working with really low-level armor, like from the mm. beginning of the game, was to roll around the the logs, like along the side of the castle, and have that basically be the, the way I traverse the level. Like, see how many of those platforms I could <laughs> skip fighting the enemies, That's... just by, like, trying to mess with uh, the geometry of the level. And That's a very it... good strategy. It sort of worked. Um, unfortunately, it didn't get me super far, or I had to get back onto the platform, and then that was the struggle. But there were some areas you could do it, and I was kind of surprised with how successful it was, given that it sounds like such a dumb idea to begin with. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it worked out for me for a bit there. Our QA team was going crazy about those logs. <laughs> Yeah. They were like, you can fall out here and you can fall out in this other section and blah, blah, blah. So it, it took a bit of fiddling with, but I think it looks very good. So Yeah, I, th I think the, the design of these has always felt very Minecraft, whilst also kind of having its own well, character. Just and uh, that just seems like the kind of way somebody who was, you know, a, a somewhat experienced Minecraft builder would think about designing a fortress with all of the kind of the block choices going into it even, you know? Yeah, like... like I think we, we, I was not involved in, in building those early levels, but the, the two other level designers are so skilled at finding good references and seeing how players of vanilla like, like to build things and mm -hmm. shape things up. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's what makes it feel so true to, to vanilla. And yeah. I think that's great. At this point, you have sort of 11 years worth of player builds to look back on. So yeah, you can yeah. You can sort of pull from any era. I know like a lot of a lot of what goes into Minecraft Dungeons environment feels quite modern. But you, if you wanted to go something that felt a little bit more like something people would build in the early days in beta, you know, if you want to try older, even structure designs, like the way villages have changed now, mm. like looks completely different to how they used to look. So you've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of different inspiration that you can pull from there. Yeah, and I'm not... excited to see what happens with updates like Oceans and the Nether, because the Nether is going to look more like the 116 Nether now. So, Yeah. So hopefully we get some cool stuff going. It's looking so nice. Like, I'm very, <laughs> very excited about the Nether. Yeah. We're going to add some new mobs as well, which I think is going to be cool. I think that's, uh, yeah, what... what... I think people are hoping for and expecting from uh, updates is just like what can you guys add to the game that feels like it's at, at the same time it's a uh, a tribute to vanilla minecraft but it's almost expanding on the ideas vanilla minecraft puts out there so like what you guys could do with piglins and you know striders and stuff like that from the nether update there's there's so many interesting concepts there Ooh, enderman it went down very fast. <laughs> I think it may have, it may have gotten pushed off the ledge nice. by the uh, the sliding parts. B 
But yeah, we'll uh, have to see if we can meet up and play again when some of the next DLC comes out, because I'm sure it'll be it'll be a lot more fun for you once you can actually talk about some of the stuff that you have planned. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think there's a ton of very cool stuff coming, uh, or at least we have a lot of good, like, cool ideas, I think. Um, so, yeah, whenever we release new stuff, we can talk about it. I think I'm really excited about there being new um, achievements and stuff in the game as well, because... Mm. Obviously, uh, I, I don't mean to bring that up just so I can kind of name drop myself, but <laughs> the uh, the Frozen Fists achievement got put in the game because of me fighting through the game without weapons. Mm. And I, I think, like, the, the rest of the achievements that came along with that had so many interesting challenges that obviously they have to be tied into the DLC to a certain extent, but I think it's really cool to see what can be pulled out of the game as a challenge, almost to prompt players to try and play in the game a different way. Yeah. Like, I I hadn't really used the jungle weapons very much before the game said, okay, now try and beat the secret level only using jungle weapons. Yeah, our one of our producers, Mark, he is very, very into achievements. So he's mm -hmm. been um, heading, like, the efforts to make new achievements as interesting as possible. And that's yeah. been very helpful because since he is super, like, interested in that, it helps to have his perspective of what makes an interesting achievement and what yeah. is what is fun for the players to try out. And yeah, I think his input has been amazing. So yeah, he's... I, I like Mark a lot. I've been following him on Twitter for a while. I was able to meet him back in 2017 when uh, they did a, a Minecraft Live watch party in uh, the Copper Box Arena in London. He was there for that. Um, and so, yeah, he's he's always been a, a really, really cool guy. Yeah, he's lovely. To, and, and you know, if you, if you ever want anybody to just talk to about Magic the Gathering, he is also, <laughs> also your guy for that. Yeah. Yes, he is. I haven't played Magic in about, you know, 10 or 15 years at this point, but, you know, that, that guy's enthusiasm just makes me want to start playing again. Yeah, he's uh, joined the dungeon team fairly recently. Like yeah. he's been with us since the summer, and yeah. it's been great to have him on board because he knows so much about Minecraft, obviously, because he's been on the on the studio for so long. Yeah, I know he was um, kind of more responsible for realms and marketplace content before, yeah. and so he's he's obviously had that kind of level of communication with players for a while, as well as you know just being a part of the crew. So that's a really good perspective to have, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Oh, right. it's time. Uh, yay, there it is. Now this boss took me the longest to fight <laughs> without weapons. It was yep. about about two hours. My wife actually came in at one point and was like, Are you still doing this? And really? Like, yep. Two yeah. hours. Um, yeah, because because he had so much health and the skeletons kept respawning and when I could only do a maximum of two damage at a time, it was uh, a little bit more difficult to take care of them. But yeah, it was it was worth it because it was actually my first attempt at Desert Temple. Like, I was kind of impressed with uh, actually being able to do it first try. Oh, well, it's going down. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the power of these weapons in this case. I think <laughs> having that uh, DPS with fighters bindings is just so good. Yes. Oh, it's not going to yeah. save me from that situation, though. If there it, it goes. If it hits you straight on, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a tricky it's one. all over. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> the baby zombie is just going to take, take, take a bite and then run away, yeah. It's funny, you don't normally see uh, zombies and those other enemies in this fight, but then I guess uh, that's the night effect coming back into play a little bit. The spawning mobs that don't necessarily belong here. And that's why I think night mode is interesting, because you get to fight a lot of weird stuff in weird places. Yeah, like and it, it feels it feels a little bit more like the the core Minecraft experience people are used to is just any mob spawning basically anywhere. Anywhere, and yeah. Obviously, it, it's it's great to have like the themes that you have with these levels, but it certainly presents a little extra challenge. Nice. Doing pretty well here. Yeah. Again, Apocalypse 3 is comfort zone. I feel like Apocalypse 4 is probably sweet Ooh. spot at this stage. 
but Apocalypse 3 is definitely like, yeah, we can make our way through this. A couple of, like, casual deaths here and there, but nothing, uh, nothing we can't handle at this stage. So many mobs. Yeah, I'm just trying to assist from a distance with Shockwave because I don't have my, uh, my ranged weapons to fall back on. There we go. And this time before we leave, I'll uh, dip into my inventory and try and equip some of my stronger stuff so the merchants will give me better trades. Nice. I need to find all of the good stuff in here. I've got... I think I had armor down here that was 121. Oh, I'm wearing 121 right now. Okay. What else can I equip? This was another trick I had to learn while I was trying to get some slightly better <laughs> uh, equipment. It was like swap out all of the good stuff for the high level things. Got a 120 Buzzy Bees Nest. And 122. Yeah, okay, that looks good. All right, we made it. We actually beat a level. Nice. <laughs> Amazing that we've been playing this for an hour and a half Once and we've again, only beaten two teacher. levels. But uh, if people wanted a challenge, this is it, man. This is it. Yeah. All right. Let's see. What do we get? Boots of Swiftness. You know, I can actually use those in this build, which is good. Shock Powder is pretty nice. Yeah, I think the Snowball was doing a lot of the work there for me. Just being oh, able yeah. to stun enemies is so useful. For these, these harder difficulties especially. Salvage a bunch of this. I have to be a little bit careful not to salvage the stuff that's actually useful to me, just because it's lower level. <laughs> Okay, if I close and reopen that, that's a little bit, bit, bit more bit more organized, I feel like. I, I can't hold on to the scythe for too long. I have to <laughs> I have to have this going on. Alright, uh Lara, I think mm -hmm. I'll probably leave it there if, if you're uh yeah. if you're happy with that. I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, like I said, and it'll be nice to uh to spend a little bit of time with my chat talking a little bit about Minecraft Dungeons and uh thanking everybody who's subscribed and cheered some bits. Uh, so good. far on the stream. Uh, where can people find you online if they want to get in touch? Because I'm sure you're, you're interested in getting more feedback for Minecraft Dungeons. Oh yeah, always. It's it's very nice to hear what people have to say. So it's uh, Premster underscore L on Twitter. Look for me, otherwise my name on Twitter and, and I'll pop up. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Great to get some insight about Minecraft Dungeons and uh, to be honest, just great to hang out and play with someone else because it's 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 super fun playing multiplayer in this game i always have a blast doing it thank you for having me it's it's been so much fun all right well uh that'll be it for our little discord call uh folks in the chat i'm gonna go to a very quick intermission but don't go anywhere we'll be back in a few minutes time bye everyone Okay. Hey folks. Thank you so much for sticking around. 
appreciate everybody being here. I am going to briefly change the stream title. Now that Laura is no longer with us, very kind of her to spend the time. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm sorry I wasn't paying so much attention to the chat. Obviously, when I have a guest on, I want to make sure that we spend a lot of time just kind of picking their brains about how everything, how everything is for them, how the development of Minecraft Dungeons goes. That's super cool. I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope you guys really enjoyed getting some of her insights into what's coming next for Minecraft Dungeons, how the team works together, all of that kind of stuff. I'll uh, unmute the desktop audio as well so we get some some Minecraft Dungeons background music. I'm going to turn my speakers on and take my headphones off because I get warm when I'm wearing headphones. That's why I don't use them most of the time. Uh, yeah, let's hit the the stream info and let's have Bearfist Steve versus Halloween, I think. All right, really enjoyed the game slash interview. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really know if it was going to be like an interview style of thing or or what, but I uh, yeah I, I I really appreciate spending the time with somebody who's got the that kind of insight into the game. Uh, give me two seconds to turn my speakers on. The dance around my chair to do this, and now I can hear the game. Oh boy. Yeah, we're going to be uh, changing the stream title again a little bit later because I want to play some Hades with you guys. I've been talking about this game so much. <laughs> Is this Barefoot Steve? I really wish you could kick in this game. I should have given her that feedback. Like, give me the capacity to kick, please. Uh, so yeah, let's let's hop back into the game for a bit. It was great to hear such a positive perspective on the development process. Yeah, and again, like, I always tend to really enjoy hearing people talk about stuff enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my my whole deal. Let's go back to the main menu here. Um, is like, I can listen to anybody talk about something they're passionate about, you know? And so I really feel like that's the kind of, the kind of discussion I want to have. <laughs> Zozatron gifting a sub to Premster L. Well, thank you so much for, for gifting a sub to Laura. That's, I'm not sure how often she's going to be in my chat, but if uh, she wants to come back for any more... Um, any more Minecraft Dungeons streams, I'll be happy. Um, all right, let's go through some of the alerts and stuff because we've had a bunch of stuff come in already on the stream and I don't want to overlook that. Uh, we had Closen with the five months, Naloj Gaming with the four months of Prime saying Mycelium or Grass, Podzol, my friend, Podzol. Uh, Elkhorn with 32 months of support. Oh my days, four months off the three year resub. Thank you so much. Happy Halloween to you. Uh, Beamy Mike resub for 14 months. Thank you. Astro Mango with two months of Prime saying, I feel like you in your very first video with my new gaming PC, even though it's only an i5. Well, my my very first uh, video was in 480p, so I think you're probably beating me out already. Thank you so much for the two months of Prime. Kate46, if you're still here, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Says you woke up kind of sad, but saw that I was streaming and now you're happy. Well, it means a lot to make you happy. I hope your day improves. And uh, yeah, I hope that's... If, if that's just because you're not going to be able to go out on Halloween, like it's a weird year, but hopefully you can find some cool stuff to entertain you. Hopefully get some candy if that's what you were looking forward to. Jonas gifting five subs. Thank you so much, Jonas. Really appreciate the gifted subs. Uh, to Millie, your boy Jello, Pineapple, Pizzaza... Uh, double, uh, triple zero tragic solitude and big fill. Guys, enjoy your gifted subs and make sure you thank Jonas if you've not done already. Uh, we had Fragmania with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for the new Prime sub. Enjoy your emotes and your sub badge. Welcome to the Pixels. Uh, Hawksmart with the six months and Pixlery hype all over the place. Love it. Dr. Joni, thank you so much for the 500 bits. No message, but thank you. And Omouse. Omouse1, thank you so much for the Prime sub about 15 minutes ago. We've cleared the, the list. Uh, and of course, Zozatron, I already gave thanks to for gifting a sub. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to play a little bit more Minecraft Dungeons because we can, because I haven't played this for a while, and because updates are new and I want to clear some of these spoopy trials. Um, recommended power level is super high for these, but I do wonder if maybe we can tone it down to um, to Apocalypse or to, to Adventure difficulty and have like a slightly easier time running through it. Um, I kind of want to rebuild my setup here as well because I just uh, completely scrambled everything trying to get the the right artifact in play. Um, I think I might go back to using the battle robe because it's just got that kind of slight movement boost that I want. 
And I guess some of my merchants might have refreshed. We have a better iron hide amulet. It's not going to protect me anymore, but it's going to protect me for longer. I do like the fact that the iron hide amulet, you can basically just renew it constantly once it gets beyond a certain duration. Um, and let's see what we've got here. Random melee weapon, uh, random armor. Soul robe. Okay, 121. I feel like most of the good stuff I have right now is 121. Uh, so that works. Potion barrier and protection could be good, but I just don't like uh, not having the maneuverability that I get from something like this. And the, the, the artifact cooldown is so important for Bare Fist Steve. Uh, we'll keep the wind horn because that's kind of the main deal. Melee attack speed on that thief armor. If I could get a good spider armor, that would be weapons grade. Uh, we can probably trash those. And yeah, like, props to Lara for putting up with me for an hour and my, like, ridiculous play style because... Oh, we have a 123 buzzy nest. Nice. Um, yeah, I feel like it, it, it can't be all that easy to deal with somebody who insists on only fighting with melee attacks when, like, all you want to do is drop back and shoot stuff from range. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, she knew what she signed up for. She's seen the, the, the playthrough. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, we got an ancient bow. Pets attack target moles. Boost attack on next roll. Oh, okay, so that's dynamo in bow form. Interesting. I like that. And the guardian bow I know pretty well at this point. We're going to trash the venom glaive. Thing is, that gives me so much more emeralds. Like, trashing all of that stuff, I never run out of never run out of cash. Um, I have 127 daggers there as well that I completely missed, which is why I need to clear some of my inventory so I can actually see what I have. Um... Because those are probably going to absolutely boost my power level. Um, I don't have a soul knife in this. This build, basically, all I want to do is punch. Um, so this is this is Barefist Steve's legacy, is that he has to punch his way through everything. Um, so that was night mode and mob speed being increased by 30%. I wonder if we can try and run through this level a little faster. Because, like I said, we were kind of getting distracted both by chatting and by um by uh like the amount of mobs that were spawning constantly so night mode is tough but i feel like we can maybe make our way through here and we can always like i said drop it down to um drop it down to adventure difficulty if it just gets too much but i feel like if i bring potion barrier into play here and there and i'm just smart with it we can kind of do this like the OG Bearfist Steve way where we kind of hang back a little bit or at least find a place that we can rest and just manage Potion Barrier really well. And try and get through the level a little quicker. That Electrified Enchant did not do badly though. How is volume level for you guys? Is it still okay? I think I need to turn up a little bit on my speakers but I can't like pause the game. Um, and whoa, okay. That... Did the Witch's Potion have some sort of gravity field there? Like, yes, it does. Okay, great. This is the problem, right? The gravity pulls you into that poison cloud and you can't do anything about it? That's that's tough. Like, that's that's what I was saying before about how the, the potions don't... Like, the Witches just have gravity. You genuinely cannot escape their orbit. I am Sandra Bullock to these Witches right now. Yeah, as an attack, that is that is wild. Gravity Pulse is the armor enchant, and gravity is the weapon enchant. But when they use that on potions, like, weapons grade. Whole new level. And now we have a bunch of baby zombies, all of which have burning and protection. Good. <laughs> Luckily, they all melee, and then... Yep, I die. Great. Oh... Oh boy, yep, and I'm right here again. Okay, potion barrier up, and hopefully we can get through some of this. The witches, though. The witches, though. Is this the new DLC? Uh, yeah, this is the new update. Spooky Fall update has just come out. Uh, Howling Peaks is not going to be out until later this year, I believe. I can't remember if Laura said specifically, but I know uh, she wasn't really able to talk too much about um, like the release dates for uh, upcoming DLC because they don't know, because they need to be ready. It's all its all about, like, playtesting it and making sure it's all ready, but uh, once there is a release date for them, I'm sure we will know about it through Minecraft.net and the Minecraft Dungeons launcher. 
Just a... I was right on the edge of that and I didn't even see it. That was my bad. That was my bad. The next death will not be, though. The next death will just be this game being real hard now. So yeah, spooky trials are, like, legit tough. I think I might have to play this on adventure mode if I actually want to get the, uh, the equipment. Which I assume you can get on any difficulty, so it won't be that tough, right? Assuming you can play these on adventure, because I saw the difficulty thing and it did say apocalypse, but I don't know if that means you have to play on apocalypse mode. Uh, hello? Sorry to, uh, crash the party, lads. I die. Hmm. <laughs> that is very tough. So yeah, if I go to adventure difficulty... Okay, I can play Spooky Trial on Adventure. Cool. This is probably still going to be... I mean, I don't know about tough. It's going to be relatively easy, but it's probably still going to be kind of hectic because of night mode. Mob speed is still super fast. But yeah, we can basically one-shot stuff. That's not bad. This is the only way I'll be able to get through this level with the equipment I currently have. And the grind is where it's at. Like, you're, you're gonna... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is this is way easier, thankfully. Uh, you're gonna be able to grind for better equipment that's gonna make Apocalypse on these trials feel trivial, but Night Mode is pretty wild. And that's the kind of thing that they can implement into other trials in future. We also don't have Gravity Witches, which, to be honest, sounds like an incredible indie band name. Like, I would listen to the Gravity Witches. Baby zombies are dang fast. They are. Especially when they have 20% move speed. Or 30%, apparently. According to the modifiers. Thought you only had a Switch and PC. It looks like I can play on Xbox. I'm playing on PC with an Xbox pad. I also own a PS4, but I don't really play games on it. Um, but I'm playing with an Xbox 360 controller on my PC. Because I prefer games like this with a controller. Like, it just feels more natural to me to use, like... They kind of feel more arcade-y, and that sort of arcade joystick and buttons combo always felt better to me than using keyboard and mouse for games like this. It feels a little bit more fluid and maneuverable to me. Same with Hades. Um, when we're going to be playing a bit of Hades later, it's going to be uh, it's going to be all controller. And I believe that game recommends you play with a controller. You can play keyboard and mouse, and people do, but it's perhaps not the best way of doing it. Hey, this is a different layout for this level. I've not really seen the village entrance like this before. I wonder if they've added that for the DLC as well. Mr. Casto in the house. Welcome on in. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> Glad you had such a good time with the raid. And thank you for everyone who uh, was in the stream the other day and showed up for that raid. And stuck around, dropped a follow. What's the reward for this trial? Uh, there is basically unique Halloween-themed gear out right now and it seemed to be some sort of weapon which I think is just a reskin of one of the glaives but I I could be wrong about that it's gonna be interesting to find out we have two more cauldrons over this way OMJ thank you so much for the 300 bits thought I was playing on switch and you're so confused when you saw the bumper and the trigger keys yeah it's it's funny like People always assume that if I'm playing on PC, I'm playing keyboard and mouse stuff. But I just find the layout a lot easier. There's there's a lot of people who like playing this game keyboard and mouse style, though, because they're used to uh, playing Diablo from back in the day. When Diablo kind of controlled a little bit more like um, the other Blizzard games that are out there. 
with the kind of like long hot bar across the bottom and everything. Like regular Minecraft, I don't think I could go back to using a controller for. Like, I remember doing that on the Xbox, and for whatever reason, the the controller felt intuitive at the time, probably because it was all I had done. But hello, I was in the swamp there for a second. <laughs> Did not think the swamp was that deep. Apparently it was. Dawn French falling into a puddle. Dot gif. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the amount of... Um, the amount of experience I had with... Controller Minecraft on the 360... I guess kind of allowed me to feel like it was the default thing. But I don't know if I could really go back to doing it now. Man, it's so dark. I think even the levels being darker is actually contributing to how disorienting this is. You can still follow the objective marker, but man. Took a break from Netherite Beacon? Yeah, you, you might notice this is Saturday. I don't normally stream on Saturdays. I thought I'd do a bonus stream today because it's Halloween. Because I expect people would be, uh, you know, hanging out at home, chilling, looking for something to watch. And uh, it felt like the right time to check out the Minecraft Dungeons update, because they have a Halloween-themed update. Enjoy the weens! I'm great at throwing TNT off cliffs. That is apparently my one skill. That and punching very fast. And yeah, I'm I'm more than happy to just play this through in adventure difficulty right now, because on Apocalypse, nah. Like, the recommended level is 125. I don't even have any gear that's 125, apart from some knives that I don't want to use. Minecraft Java has mobs wearing pumpkin heads. Yeah, they do. They do that basically every, uh, every year, I guess. And that's a fun way of doing it. It's like the two days a year that uh, chests turn into Christmas presents. Zombie Pigman Farm was too good. The uh, the Skyblock one turned out pretty well. Considering I, I more or less improvised that, like I did quickly build it in a creative test world to make sure that it would work and that I wasn't just wasting my time or like misleading people in a tutorial video. But um, yeah, it worked better than I could have hoped because I figured it was going to, but I wanted to make sure that the piglins didn't just fall off that glass platform. And after the first one or two piglins, they don't. Uh, so it worked out pretty well. A bit like Boromir with the arrow sticking out of me. Chris, too soon. <laughs> too soon, my dude. Pull one out for Boromir. Respect the fallen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's funny in Minecraft. You end up with arrows sticking out of all kinds of places. None of them good. The punching speed is way too fast. How do you do this? Uh, it's a combination of having the fighter's bindings, which are by default a very fast punching weapon, and the the attack speed is constant, so it's not like a combo. In, uh, in some of this game, you find um, gauntlets, which have like a five-punch combo. Fighter's Binding's just like... You just continually punch until there's nothing left to punch. Um, like that. Uh, and I also have the Death Cat Mushroom, which improves your attack speed by like 20%. So I'm able to punch... Like, a little bit faster every time. There's also strength potions that can uh, really improve the damage you do. We've got a low level fishing rod and a hunting bow. Because of course that's all going to be low level because we're playing on uh, baby difficulty right now. Well, that's just prime. I do like the night mode stuff though. Constantly spawning mobs keeps you on your toes. They do need to add in a way to pause the game. <laughs> I feel like if, if nothing else... Mr. BK, thank you so much for that prime sub. Enjoy your emotes and your sub badge. Welcome to the Pixels. Mr. Badger Seth with the 200 bits as well. Awesome bonus stream. Thank you so much. All right, we're just going to murder this cauldron real fast. Cool. Um, that, once again, we're playing on medium difficulty. We are used to playing on, like, top-level hard difficulty. So <laughs> that, was, that was not a boss fight. That was a, a massacre. Um, also, here's where you get the rune from the swamp. Oh, we're not going to get it though because we already have it. Archillager's potion supply is no more, and it will be a long time before the witches recover from this blow. 
Well done. Thank you. What do we get? What are the rewards? Sweet Halloween loot. I want to see it even if I don't end up using it because it's probably not going to be like commensurate with my level right now. Hey, there it is. 101 is still pretty good for adventure difficulty loot. I guess we do have a high power level, but... Sinister Sword. Drawn to those who face the spookiest of nights cuts through the night with a howl. It sure does. Wow. Look at this thing. The Blood Sword, basically. And it says, increase critical hit chance. So that plus exploding. Pretty lethal combination. Leeching as well. Not bad. Not bad. Give that a few swings. Not really seeing any crits. Oh, there is one. Okay. So 5,000 damage. Yeah. Not bad. It's, it's going to do about 3,000 on the... The two swings before the... Uh, the thrust. And the thrust is going to get you that 5k. That's not bad. Pretty good going. I have a ton of gear to trash for a second. We have 118 soul knife. I still have my ember robe from the original playthrough as well. What are my wife's pronouns? Uh, either she, her, or they, them. It kind of goes back and forth. No, it wasn't a boss fight, it's a Panic at the Disco song. <laughs> oh, it's not a boss fight, it's a massacre, it was a Panic at the Disco song, yeah. Alright, we've done that one. So that is the... Um... It looks like they all have different rewards. Cool, so we've probably got like an artifact, an armor, a bow, a sword. That makes sense. Oh, this is the one where multi-shot spiders are in pumpkin pastures. Yeah, there you go. What if all the dungeons and mobs came to Minecraft? To be honest, they, they've tried, obviously, with the, the Isologer. I don't know if you could really implement all of them. Like, the Geomancer would actually be really difficult to fight because so much of the way the Geomancer works relies on you having an overhead perspective. And I feel like that might have been one of the problems with the Isologer is the fact that you can't see yourself from the top down in vanilla Minecraft, so you really couldn't see the range of its attacks until it was too late, which might just end up being more irritating to fight than actually fun, you know? Mr. Ace Draco asking about the next RTX survival episode. Yeah, I've seen the rough drafts of the custom PC that NVIDIA and Scan are building for me, um, and it's looking incredible so far, um, but I'm not making any more RTX episodes until that arrives because... I need to make sure I can transfer the world over before I make too much more progress and it's kind of part of the deal I had with NVIDIA in the first place was that they were sponsoring five episodes of content, two of which are coming out after I get this PC. Because basically they want me to be able to show off this fancy PC that they made for me and what it can do and get like even higher FPS in RTX Minecraft etc etc. And like they are loading that thing out, like it is, it is coming with the works and I am incredibly excited. I can't show you guys anything yet, and a lot of the concepts I've seen are just, like, rough concepts. But it is it is next-level stuff. Um, yeah, I, I can't really say a whole lot more than that right now. And I almost don't want to speak it into existence in a way, in case somehow, like, I wake up and this has all been a dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's definitely one of those situations where I have I have, like, zero idea how any of this is really happening. I'm, of course, very glad that it is. But yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very cool. What if all the Minecraft mobs came to dungeons? Oh, that'd be interesting. I feel like that's somehow more plausible. <laughs> and there'd be some that'd be, again, kind of difficult. And there are some like Endemites that feel kind of like, how would that work? Because you can end up pearl to other players. But this is the uh, rune for pumpkin pastures as well. Um, <laughs> you can end up pearl to other players, but then that leaving an endermite behind for you to fight doesn't really seem like an intuitive mechanic. And then you'd never encounter them in single player. So like to be true to Minecraft on some of these things, they probably have to uh, like think about those and approach them differently as 
things to add into the game. I don't think it's really on their list to add absolutely everything from Minecraft, though, you know? Because they've already got so much stuff in this game that isn't in Minecraft to begin with, like necromancers and wraiths and the Isologer, the Illusioner, is in vanilla Minecraft in the code, but not necessarily in the the playable game, the survival game. See you later, OMJ. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Again, adventure difficulty, baby mode. We did not even get this far when we played it on Apocalypse level. Like, the Apocalypse level version of these challenges wants you to be past endgame. I do think Apocalypse Plus is going to be fun, like, to, to actually kind of scale up and get back on that loot grind and try and get some some fighters bindings that are up close to, like, level 150 or something. I think 160 or maybe 180 is the gear cap now, so you're going to find that higher level stuff. B-Nest armor, I never got this before. Oh! This isn't even a Halloween thing, this is just for me. Oh, yes! Beefist, Steve. <laughs> Excellent. What do you got? Uh, burning, Recycler. Has a chance to summon a bee when hit. So it's not a roll one like some of those are. That's so good. I'd love it if you could camouflage yourself. That's freaking adorable. I love that. I'm getting all the bee nest armor now. Apparently it just drops from this level. I never got that one before. I guess I haven't really played Pumpkin Pastures all that much since some of the updates, but... <laughs> Beefist, Steve. I love it. Also slightly more kind of closer to the difficulty level for this area, so I don't mind using it a little bit. That'd be a fun way of playing this game, actually, would be to... Uh, even if you've got, like, higher levels so you can do more damage, just kind of wear armor that works for the difficulty level. And that way there's still a little bit of challenge involved in uh, facing down some of these mobs. You don't have, like, 10,000 health like I have right now. Oh, here come the, uh, here come the electrified creepers, though. This is where I check out. <laughs> like I said, electrified is the one enchantment that I basically avoid the rest of the time, because it does so much damage. If there's more than one mob, it just one-shots you. Today when you open Minecraft, skeletons are wearing pumpkins. I know, welcome to Halloween. Halloween is like that in Minecraft. There was also a bug in this level that I think they've patched now, where after you beat a certain like mini boss when that evoker boss music starts it just like kept going throughout the rest of the level which is really weird you'd just be walking around this otherwise very calm town scene and you'd hear ha 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 the entire time it's like okay guys <laughs> bit dramatic i'm only on a farm When the netherite bee can be ready, uh, we are going to do a little bit more mining for it tomorrow. Get ourselves to 5,500. And then uh, on Tuesday this week, we're going to do a longer stream and we're going to finish it. And we'll do the smelting. We'll actually assemble it live on stream. It's going to be pretty great. I think we might even do like a little bit of... Um, like prep work for the tunnels that we're going to be doing on Tuesday on tomorrow's stream just so we uh, we don't have to spend like nine hours digging 
What recording slash screen sharing website or app do I use? Um, right now I'm using Streamlabs OBS to stream to you guys. Uh, the rest of the time I use Marillis Action, which I have a uh, paid version of. And that's really great. It's very lightweight, very functional recording software. But yeah, when recording my videos, I use Action. There's some very good software out there. OBS does the job if your uh, computer is decent. OBS tends to um, tends to get a lot of like encoding overloading issues, or did for a while for me, um, because like CPU load with OBS seems to be like a little bit weird sometimes. <laughs> that guy took like seven punches. Beth is Steve is a powerful man. And this is a lower level difficulty. Let's um let's keep one of these bee nest armors, because those are quite fun. But then let's put the battle robe back on. The traditional look. His truest form. You did it. And the villagers of the pumpkin pasture. I nine 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 hundred K makes OBS run like a champ. Yeah, I'm sure, but not everyone has that, right? OBS is free though, that's the uh the upside to it. And Streamlabs OBS, for for what it's worth, hasn't had as many problems. Here we go, that's the armor. The hungry horror. Ooh. Twenty five percent melee attack speed, thirty five percent damage reduction. I could have done with that when we were playing through Apocalypse. Right? Let's keep the 75 B-Nest armor. Let's keep the high level one. Potion barrier and... Final shower is not bad. Artifacts all get used when you drop below 25%. So if you have like... Whatever it is, the uh, life medallion and like the regen totem. You just drop three regen totems on you. Beth is Steve is the hungry horror. Coming soon to a cinema near you. If you want to try and stream Minecraft on Discord while you talk to friends. Oh, you can probably stream Minecraft through Discord. You just screen share. Discord does that natively. But if you're talking about streaming Minecraft like on Twitch or something, then you'll need Streamlabs. All right, uh, I'm going to take another very short break. Uh, sorry for all the breaks. I just need to run to the bathroom because I've just drunk an entire cup of tea and half a glass of water. So uh, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with some more Minecraft Dungeons in a minute or two. Enjoy the music. Hey all, I'm back. Hello. Thank you so much for handing out tea, coffee, and hot chocolate. Hot chocolate sounds good, actually, right now. For real, I might switch to that from tea. Uh, I'm going to compose a tweet. Because I feel like, once again, thanking 
flower for her time and uh, getting everyone hype about Minecraft Dungeons. with you in two seconds guys uh, um, I'm saying I'm playing through the levels on adventure difficulty so I can even see the items. <laughs> there we go. I'll tweet out again when we go in live with Hades. Cool. Thank you for uh, sitting there while I tweet. And let's take this uh, armored horror somewhere even spookier. Let's go to Fiery Forge. Three times as many souls with night mode. <laughs> 0.1 times difficulty though, right? Completion rewards power 97 to 104 still pretty high for adventure mode we're doing anything special for halloween this oh you're talking about saving the screen share afterwards oh right okay yeah you could probably just record your window with obs for that then i'm not certain uh yeah it depends how your computer setup would handle doing all of that stuff at once but if you've got a half decent pc you'd be fine Maybe stick to 30 FPS capture if it's struggling. <laughs> so many of these plate armors. Drevel, I don't really know, like, PC brands all that well, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but either way, I'm sure it'll be okay. You'll make it work. Is this bare fist now? Uh, this is <laughs> this is not necessarily bare fist. I have gauntlets. Uh, it is the same bare fist Steve character, but I like to play on higher difficulty levels, so these days I tend to play with fighters' bindings. We could try doing this bare fist on... Um, like default difficulty but I wouldn't last very long on uh, adventure or apocalypse it's not that I wouldn't last very long like if I had decent armor I'd be fine it's just that the enemies have so much health when you go above default difficulty that you just you just can't damage them boss mobs though right Chopping wood while Pix is beating mobs up. Hey, there you go. I'm karate chopping while you're axe chopping. Judo chop! some pumpkins this evening but they were all sold out yeah tends to be the case 
Like, even if people aren't planning on, like, trick-or-treating and stuff like that this year, they're still probably decorating for Halloween. Carving a pumpkin is something you can do with kids as well, and... Yeah, I'm kind of not surprised if they're all sold out. Last year, we couldn't get a pumpkin, so we ended up carving a watermelon instead. It turned out surprisingly well. I think there's still pictures of that on my Instagram if you want to scroll back a year. But we, uh... We made a jack o melon and then uh, I think we did more with the watermelon than we would have done with the pumpkin, to be honest. And pumpkin's our first priority. Number one priority. Attain pumpkin. Again, I'm trying to clear the level, but... These are all just night mode mobs. Jacko melon sounds amazing. I mean, hey, like, I, I'm a Minecraft player if nothing else, and the pumpkin and the melon are more connected than you think. <laughs> I'm like, surely that's the same thing, right? And at first, um, you know, because my wife is American, uh, they were kind of upset that we couldn't get a... Uh, a pumpkin, but then we carved the melon and we were like, no, this is actually pretty cool. It's like a hipster, hipster jack-o'-lantern. It was not a bad substitute in the end. I was worried that it was going to be too watery inside and that the candle wouldn't stay lit, but it like, it stayed out there all night. We even got a couple of compliments on it from trick-or-treaters last year. They were like, we like the melon idea. I was like, yeah, they had no pumpkins. <laughs> Petition for jack-o'-melons in Minecraft. I mean, what would carved melon even do? Imagine you can make a, uh, an iron golem with a melon for a head instead of a pumpkin. Like a jungle golem. Be kind of different. A pump lawn. Oh, and the exit's right there. Very cool. How convenient. Ah! You get waved in the back. It's wild, but this is how Apocalypse 1 feels to play at this point. Like, maybe you have to hold down punch for a few seconds longer, but it's not that bad. Apocalypse 4 is, like, barely doable. A golem melon. <laughs> I like that. The geomancers are like next level in Apocalypse as well. Like, they attack so fast. And I can't hit them with my uh, fancy shockwaves. If I'm just surrounded by other stuff at the same time. You used to carve turnips when you were young in rural Yorkshire. Ah. pumpkins were popular in the UK, I guess so. Has always felt like more of an American thing. How's my day? My day's good. My day's good. Done the Hermitcraft recap today. Spent most of my morning, uh, taking notes on what had happened on Hermitcraft this week. And as usual, they put out an episode today that uh, completely invalidates half of the stuff we say in the script, but that's that's the way it is with Hermitcraft. It's all good. Oh, wow. This, this arena with, like, night mode mobs is a whole different experience. Obviously not one we're going to have for very long because, once again, adventure difficulty, but again, I want to see these new armors and stuff. Walk in the lava, please? Sure. Ta-da! You just burn for a little bit, it's fine. I'll take the emeralds. And... 
in peace. You're not the only one who said it to adventure. I just, I wanted to see the uh, the items. <laughs> Laura's like, I hope you manage to beat Apocalypse Six soon. I'm like, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, but appreciate the vote of confidence. You were disappointed with dungeons? Try it again now. Corrupted pumpkin. Yeah, this is the other thing they need at the camp. Is a way to charge up soul artifacts. Because the corrupted pumpkin is just a different corrupted beacon, from what I can tell. Plus one soul gathering, 2.5 second cooldown. I don't know how that compares to the beacon, but I think it's about the same. Just a reskin. But, um... Pretty cool, though. How do you see how much health you have? Um, if you play on PC, you can use the mouse to move and stuff. But if you have the mouse over your health, it'll show you how much health you have. Um, so I leave the mouse there, and then I play with keyboard. No, I play with a, a gamepad. A huge redstone builder. You love your outlook on farms. Simple, but they work. Yeah, I... To be honest, like, I get a little tired of people insisting that everything is hyper-efficient and optimized and, like, I, I, I enjoy there being a variety of ways to play the game. Did I already get a pumpkin head zombie for my museum? I did not, but that's that's fine. Um, I will probably get one later tonight. Might record it for the video. Uh, if not, then I can always just set my computer's date to October 31st and they still show up because I don't think it's necessarily tied to the... Um, like the actual date in the world it's tied to your computer's date so you can basically have that stuff show up anytime same with the uh chests appearing as presents if you set the day to like december 24th or 25th it will just show up that way so if i want to get them anytime i can obviously it's more fun getting them at the the preferred time if anybody wants to play uh underhauls by the way you push this and that takes you down to the chamber where the scroll is. If you're having trouble finding that. It's like right there. Yeah, that's basically just the same as Corrupted Beacon, I think. Don't see much different about that. You got RTX 2080, you're stoked to play Minecraft, but wish they did it for Java. Oh, the, the RTX, um, like, graphics. The thing is, there are people out in the community who are making, like, custom shaders for, for Minecraft, and some of those have path tracing and ray tracing and stuff in there now. It's not the same, but I'm pretty sure BSL shaders has a ray tracing pack, and Sonic Ether has one that's, um... You have to be a patron to get right now, but I assume that will actually be released at some point. Community made, uh, you know, mods and stuff like that are always going to be out there. Obviously, it's nice to have something a bit more official, but you don't need to necessarily worry too much about it. I feel like sooner or later the community effort with Minecraft always catches up to the stuff the developers are doing. Is Laura still here? No, she's uh, she was with us for about an hour and a half, but I didn't want to take up too much of her day. Originally, like the the sort of time slot we had booked was just for an hour, so it was really nice of her to stay for half an hour longer, but. Um, yeah, I think the devs are maybe chatting to some other people this weekend. I think a couple of other people might have been talking to uh, Mans Olsen. Um, but I don't know. I'm not sure who's doing that. Do you like how you repair tools in Java versus Bedrock? Yeah, I think um, Bedrock is a weird one because they have to accommodate mobile players, but having more support for the offhand if you're playing the Windows 10 edition just seems like... I'm not sure why that hasn't been implemented. Like, as a just a slight variation on the game, but if it can detect what system you're playing on, then surely it can detect whether or not you can use a mouse, you know? <laughs> 
like it knows not to put the touchscreen controls on the display when you're playing on Windows, so like why can't it give you a couple of extra keyboard shortcuts? I guess it just, you know, makes the experience more universal for everybody, but still. If they're all joining the same server and whatnot, maybe that's part of the issue. I don't know Game Dev. <laughs> game Dev? I don't know her. Ooh, we got a rapier. Not used a rapier in this game. Interesting. Again, fists, but <laughs> I uh, I do like seeing these other new weapons as they come up, and I've not really used that one. I presume it is uh, appropriately like Errol Flynn style. Oh, heck yeah it is. Wow, okay. That's fast thrusts. You're not kidding. With that, that with critical hit as well? All right, I'm, I'm saving that for when we get back to the camp. Obviously, I'm not going to use it in the level because I have principles, but it's about the principle. It's about sending a message. Um, yeah, I, I think I will I will be trying that one out on the practice dummy. Barefist Steve is not barefist and occasionally swords, Steve. <laughs> it is a little bit Zorro, you're right, yeah. Hey, Rockstar Demon, that doesn't work in Java, but thanks. I love the way zombies look when they have uh, enchantments, like the glowing eyes. <laughs> it's a very cool look. Did I play Minecraft Earth? I did. I played Minecraft Earth for a few... Um, I made a few videos on it. I played it for a couple of weeks. I would have loved to have played more, but um, I really prefer the experience of it when you go outside. They've made a couple of changes that mean that you can play Minecraft Earth from home more easily and do adventures and stuff, uh, which was really great of them, like a good decision. But um, yeah, like I, I really liked the experience of actually being able to do it as you walk around and travel places. No worries, Rockstar Demon, it's fine. It's uh, something I think happens a lot with this game because there are two different versions of it that look the same but are subtly different. Uh, people take a lot of features for granted when actually like not all of them are going to be in the game. And uh, the differences between Bedrock and Java are pretty well documented, but not everyone's going to know them, so don't worry. I don't, uh, I'm not going to take it personally or anything. Excuse me, lads. Just gotta unlock this, thank you. Do I like Minecraft or Dungeons more? I mean, obviously Minecraft, because it's, you know, Minecraft is home for me. It's all the chefs. Um, yeah, my, Minecraft has so much of what I love about games. It's cooperative, it's creative, it's building. Minecraft Dungeons is fun to dip into, but, you know, I wouldn't be streaming Minecraft constantly if it wasn't, like, my favourite game. I just don't think we have to compare these things. They're two very, very different experiences. Fireworks are starting outside your window. Yeah, they've uh, been going off in my neighborhood for the last couple of days, and it's... Uh, Occasionally made it a little bit, like, a little bit awkward to record stuff, but I mostly have the windows shut right now because it's cold, so it's not always too bad. When you're having a firework display in your local area, spare a thought for the YouTubers.
they slowly over the course of a few updates slightly change the differences until they're the same game that'd be better i mean it's uh something they've been working on in bedrock edition for a while like there's parity features being added to bedrock or java all the time but i think it really just comes down to what's going to work for mobile players versus pc players and what certain player bases aren't really willing to compromise on there's a lot that the java edition community feels is super valuable to the game and they wouldn't want to lose that makes it fundamentally different from bedrock edition but they have no like no desire to add any of that stuff to bedrock edition And, and like, obviously, like, the language it's coded in is part of it, but it's not necessarily the only reason they can't. You know, they could, in theory, code behavior like quasi-connectivity into Bedrock Edition Redstone. They choose not to because it's an unintended consequence of the way the game is coded in Java. And they don't feel like it's intuitive at all. The player base is just used to it at this point. This is how you get out of this trap, by the way. You roll onto this, the, uh... You basically, like, throw yourself off of that platform. But since you don't die <laughs> by rolling off ledges like that, it doesn't matter so much. What's my favourite armour and weapon? Uh, in this, I really favour the fighter's bindings, which I'm using right now, because I just like punching stuff. And the armour I use most of the time is the battle robe, because it gives you artifact cooldown and melee damage. I really want to find a unique version of the battle robe which uh, only appears in a couple of levels so I don't think I've ever got one or if I have it just hasn't had the right enchantments. It's not necessarily so much about what the armor is for me. It's um, more about the enchantments it has. But I think outside of that like design wise I really love the fox armor because I'm just a big fan of foxes in general so I like that. Do I like to play Minecraft with people, friends, neighbours, etc. or alone? Pretty much all of the Minecraft I play is for my YouTube channel, and these days it's all single player. I do enjoy playing Minecraft with other people, but it's just not something I tend to make content from anymore. And I don't really have time to because all of the stuff I do tends to be focused towards playing single player for the YouTube channel. Punch to win, yes, absolutely. Punch all the things. Especially when the things have strength potions. I've, always, I've really enjoyed people spamming the uh, trickster emotes in chat, by the way, today. The, uh, the trick emotes with the pumpkin. Wasn't really able to comment on that earlier, but it's uh, it's been in the chat. I've seen it. It's a very appropriate for today. I don't think I've enchanted this armor at all, so it's probably why I'm occasionally dipping in health here. There it is. Get those pumpkins in the chat. Yep, that's not going to go well. Using Shockwave as a ranged weapon? Pretty much, yes. When I can, but... The stairs make it difficult. And sometimes, especially if you're on higher difficulty, Shockwave just doesn't do enough. Like, if you get up close and you can do a little extra damage, then... That's a little more doable. But also, it requires you to stand still, which is not ideal for ranged weapons. You want to be able to keep the enemy at range. There we go. Pursue! Trash those. Nice. The arch Illager escaped to the ramparts. Press on, hero. You mustn't let him get away. Press on. All right, that is our last uh, spooky trial. So this should be the last uh, 
I assume this is the bow, right? Nice, a haunted bow. What indescribable horror! The creeping tentacles of this bow reach for the unknowable void. Well, sure they do. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool looking bow. What does it do? Uh, shoots two enemies at once. Okay, so multi-shot. Or, um, whatever it's called. Um, bonus arrow, <laughs> basically. The love spell bow has radiant shot baked in. That's kind of cool. I was going to try this out. Oh, now hold on. That's pretty good. Only does 73 damage, though. I wonder what the unique version of this is. I think it's anything like the Fighter's Bindings, where it doesn't have a combo, it's just constant. I'm interested. Heck yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that a lot. Uh, Alright. Alright, let's put the uh, the love spell bow back on. So I'm going to keep hold of these... Uh, these extra items. Just have them on the character permanently, even though... Um, even though I probably won't use any of them. They're all pretty low level for where I need to be apocalypse-wise. We are also really, really close to level 133 on the character. So daily trials now. Do those have the option to play on... Okay, those are just like apocalypse level and they have a higher recommended power. That is wild. 3.6 times more enchanted mobs... 1.2 times mob damage, 1.4 times mob speed. Mobs are more resistant to stagger. See, that's what I was talking about in the, the first Bear Fist Steve video with stun locking them. Super useful. Um, and then 6% chance for mobs to revive. So some of those mobs were even coming back. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. But, like, if I run Soggy Cave... And my power level is... What's the highest power level I can do right now? 121 armor. Get rid of that one. 127 daggers. I have a 122, a 123 there, and a 122 there. So I can get my power up to 123. If I start a level... I guess you do have to, like, finish levels now for this to work th the way it does, right? See, the recommended power for Apocalypse 6 is 123. How much does Dungeons cost? Um, the Hero Edition was uh, 30 bucks, but that's get that gets you both the DLCs. Um, I think the base game is just 20. Hey, Ham and Cheese, my day is good. Just played Minecraft Dungeons with one of the developers for an hour and a half, which was very cool. Okay, so now if we get... Yeah, now if I join in Apocalypse 4 on Soggy Cave, we get gear that's potentially up to 128. And my fighter's binding is only 113. So if we can do this... Once again, probably going to use the Wind Horn because of... Uh, knockback and slowing them down. Let's see if we can do this. That's feeling doable. The problem with the battle robe is it really doesn't give you that much health. Which is probably why I was getting one shot so much when me and Lara were playing. She was having to pick me up constantly because of low health. Yeah, get out of here. Sit in that tree for a while and think about what you've done. Know the movie Apocalypse Now? Uh, the, the Napalm in the Morning one? I've never actually seen it. I just know of it. <laughs> oh, actually got a mob with that one for once. And with the clutch heal and the lack of enchanted witches, I think I might actually have a chance here. 
Man, sometimes you just wail on mobs, though. Like, it's kind of hilarious how long you have to hit them for. They're all so fast as well. Like, they're all way faster. Bye! Gravity witches are now my nightmare. And also my boy band. Not boy band, I guess. That'd be a good name for any kind of band, but maybe not a boy band. If there's anything still there, it's gone now. Yeah, it's not throwing too many enchanted mobs at us so far, so I'm kind of doing okay. This is where that ends. But this is probably what I would do if I wanted some better fighters bindings, is just go through this level a few times and hope for the unique drop once we reach that last chest. Potion barrier for the win! Stand in the middle and tank! This is my entire strategy. There we go. Gravity Witches does sound like an awesome band name. I bet it's already taken. Okay, so this... Yeah, you need, to, you need to use that last. Oh, so close. Like, I used to be really good at these, and now I'm just, like, fumbling my way through it. I know what each of the buttons does. There we go. And then we do that, and then we do that. Yes. You just need to get three next to each other in a row, and then you press that button. <laughs> or I guess you could do it with this one as well, but... It's, uh... I just have, like, a certain way of doing them. Thank you so much to everyone who's shown up to this stream, by the way. I know it's like a different day that I normally stream and it's not my usual content. We'll be back to vanilla Minecraft and ancient debris mining tomorrow, of course. I think it's just uh, fun to dip out of that every now and again. And today seemed like a special occasion. I felt like doing something a little bit different. And if you folks want to stick around and watch some Hades, I would greatly appreciate that because I've been pouring a lot of my time into Hades lately and I genuinely think it's a great game. So... If you guys are interested in seeing it, then... Oh, we got some more gauntlets there. I don't know if we'll get very far in Hades. Like, I don't know if we will clear. Even though I've gotten relatively good at the game, you always start with much less stuff than you have by end game. So, people are just curious to see what it's about. It's another kind of dungeon crawler style thing, but I feel like the... The story, the objectives, the art style, the combat, it's all pretty different. But it just feels like it's uh, in the same family almost as dungeons. Am I going to play Minecraft Earth in the future? I mean, probably. Hopefully, when we can go outside again, I would like to. Heard of Hades but never actually seen it played. It's It's good. It's real good. I've had to change around some of my stream layout to uh, accommodate the UI, though. That's the, the weird thing about playing other games is remembering, oh yeah, you have to, like, move your webcam around all the time and stuff. Uh, so we got 119 gauntlets. Well, not terrible, that's but... just prime. Enchantments on them aren't great. And then a hunting bow 119, which I will scrap because I don't really need it. Um, Lizard King, thank you so much for that prime sub. Enjoy your emotes and your sub badge. Welcome to the Pixels. Great to have you on board. Thank you so much for the new sub. I think I have more subs now than I've ever had on Twitch, by the way. Like, I think it passed 800 recently, and that was like a new milestone for me. So thank you guys so much for all the support lately. It's been amazing. I think the stream on uh, Tuesday or Thursday was probably like one of the hypest streams I've had recently. Hmm. 
We got a 128 Buzzy Nest from that. So that is now... Yeah, the most powerful thing I own. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The Buzzy Nest, though. Right, so like... Gear and artifact power. So it's not just the uh, the rewards you get. It is the the drops and stuff as well. Oh, and I guess now I need to go back into the level to reset my power because I finished it with the gear I was holding. I'm also... I keep pressing the back button and opening the player menu because that's, again, like I'm used to the Hades control scheme at this point. I haven't played dungeons for a week or two. Look at those emeralds. Yeah, I know. I don't spend emeralds on much because unless they have fighters bindings at this point, I'm not interested. <laughs> I feel like I could up my Ironhide amulet and then I'd have an accessory that I actually used, so... That'll do. Get rid of that old one. Okay, he gave me some 116 gauntlets, which, again, don't really have great enchantments. What I really want... What I really want is... Um, I mean, these have sharpness, but critical hit would be better. Uh, critical hit, radiance, and either shockwave or swirling is best. I prefer shockwave, because then I can hit enemies at range. But then I don't have a ranged weapon. Like, I think people who main fighters bindings but also use ranged weapons probably prefer to have swirling. Just for, like, area of effect. Do I start with YouTube before Twitch? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did not have a computer that was good enough to stream when I was um, first starting out on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, folks. Uh, that is where we're going to leave it for the Minecraft Dungeons action today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I'm going to probably go make another cup of tea. But please do stick around because we are going to be checking out Hades in a second. I'm going to be closing this down and I'll put some pretzel music on in the background so you guys can have something to jam out to. Now please do stick around for Hades, like I understand totally if people need to dip. If you guys were just here for the Minecraft stuff then that's cool, but I really like this game and I hope you guys will stick around and check it out in the meantime. Why is this not loading? Will you load? Okay it will, good. All right, I'm going to stick some music on for a second or two. I will be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. Hades will be back in a few minutes' time.